the college football experience week one and week zero uh, preview and picks as well as draft episode on the sports gambling podcast network is brought to you by underdog fantasy play their fantasy pickup for a chance to win a hundred times the amount of money you can enter in uh, college football college basketball, UFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, golf, and much, much more sign up today. Using that promo code TCE SGPN, you get a hundred percent deposit match. We're also brought to you by a V O a V O is the premier arbitrage sports betting tool. Use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit access their uh, platform for free at arbs verse odds.com. That's a R B S verse odds.com. Plus, in honor of uh, Masters Week, the Golf Gambling Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free. Enter at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash masters. And remember, as always, folks, to let it ride. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Football experience week one preview picks draft and week zero. Oh, it's I, it, it feels like the season is here. If you've been following us for year, you know, years, then you know what the hell this is. It is April 10th, but we are still previewing week one and week zero, because God damn it. We love college football, the college football experience. Make sure you go over to YouTube. You can watch this uh, episode, youtube.com slash the college experience. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. And if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, that's fair. My name is Colby swing and dancer base dad, AKA pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists. And lives by his wits. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. Nobody knows nothing. Somebody knows. Double the price. But no one touches Dundee. No one touches Dundee. That's right. We're deep into college football. April, March, February. We don't give a shit. We're talking college football. I got in an argument over the 1981 Auburn Tigers the other night. All right? It never stops. Uh, I, I believe ch- uh, one James one Brooks may have been on that team. <laughs> dropping that knowledge, dropping that knowledge. He uh, might have been drafted a year before that. I'm not 100 percent sure. I think he might have, but yeah. uh, still, Joe Cribs might have been on that team. Uh, RBU. We are, yeah, there we go. RBU. Uh, I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former former JMU Duke defensive back, the burrito eating. Sad lad, kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing. Patty C is the place to be. Hi, oh, let's get it going. I'm glad to talk matchups, history, college football, all Woo. the thick regional rivalries, all the things that make college football so great. They're trying to destroy it. They're trying to destroy it. I'm yelling at the clouds. <laughs> all right, took my dog for a walk the other day. Said, God damn it, we don't we don't have uh, big time rivalries anymore. We're gonna get no 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 real season ending Apple Cup, Civil War stuff like that. They're trying to they're trying to take it, but this show's here slowly but surely to yell they, at those clouds to yell right. at those clouds. All right, I'm uh, joined by third man in the booth, the DFS God himself. We're still playing UFL DFS, so get on over there. Also subscribe to the UFL Gambling Podcast while you're at it. Uh, give it up for the rooftop IPA drinking, home brew making, tobacco road living, the free lock giving, former, former Herndon Basketball League MVP. Give it up for NC Nick in the place to be. There we go. We are turning the page from college basketball fully into college football, and we got you covered here. Can't wait. Woo! Is he see a tide turn? 
Oh, sorry. I, here's I, I almost forgot. Uh, you, you, we I have music, music for you. You, you, you. Right here. Give that man his. Give that man his music. He's a quarterback sacker. He'll knock you out. <laughs> Gosh, I, I got to do that at karaoke one night and hear it. And bang your girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's say he'll knock you out and then bang your girl. Uh, that is That's Bob the second verse. in a nutshell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, Folks, uh, we are here to break down uh, a draft. To me, uh, you know, if you haven't listened to us throughout the years, we not only uh, – rank every uh well the top 30 games for every single week we go through and and uh draft them and essentially draft and make the case why this game's going to be better and why it's placed where it is and what makes it so great and uh yeah this this year we even have graphics and everything it's like major league we got uniforms and everything um i've been behind the scenes building shit like a goddamn like i'm working with lincoln logs over here moving and, uh, all up <laughs> Uh, I will say this before we jump into it. Uh, star running back uh, for the Oregon State Beavers, Damian Martinez, who had not transferred out. One of the shining pieces left as he had an NIL deal for 400 grand. He hit the portal yesterday. I This is, I mean, I, I feel so bad for Oregon State, man. <laughs> yeah. I, it's I'm been a rough be, uh, yeah. two years here. I don't even lose, know how you make coach, it out of all this. Lose your conference. Lose your quarterback. Lose lose your whole yeah. roster. Your yeah, your assistant coaches. We're starting Everybody. from scratch, basically. Everybody. Without a um, hope. yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, just wanted to touch base on that news. That does suck for Beavs fans out there. But, but he's uh, a hell of a running back, so it would be a very good get for uh, you know anybody that stole in the portals while trying to add a couple pieces. Yeah. It would be. It really would be. Uh, I'm assuming Michigan State will be at the forefront of that, but you never know. You might have John Ruiz, even though he's under, uh, you know, under investigation by the FBI, saying, "Here's a million smackaroos. Come on down to South Florida." Well, when uh, when Kenneth Walker Jr. went over to Michigan State a couple years ago, that worked out pretty well. So, but Nathan Carter last year did not work out. UConn's running back. I think he got injured, though. To be fair, yeah, you might be right. And Mel Tucker uh, kind of got fired. <laughs> in the middle of this, like what third, fourth game, something like that. Phone um, sex gone wrong. Phone sex gone wrong, <laughs> folks. Watch it. You know, do you really know who you're talking to? All right. <laughs> do you really know who man. you're jerking off to? <laughs> a fifty million dollar uh, beat there. Hundred million dollar. Talk about and, a bad beat. Yeah. <laughs> Un fucking believable. Uh, so look, we're going to hop into this and draft, uh, you know, our, our top teams go through the week zero matchups first, then, the, then week one. But before I do that, folks, it is master's week. You are listening to the college football experience on SGPN. That is the sports gambling podcast network. And it is master's week. The golf gambling podcast. It, you should be subscribed to, and the guys are giving away a free tailor made spider X putter enter for free sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. That's sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. All right. Uh, we are back on the college football experience and uh, yeah. YouTube.com slash the college experience. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. Shout out to the chat, James and Michael in there. Who is ECU losing to nobody? Nobody. Uh, let's here we go. Undefeated season loading. <laughs> You're going to see some sweet ass graphics. They're going to jump do. from uh, two wins to 12 wins. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Something like You're that. funny. You're fucking <laughs> really funny over there. Um, let's go. Actually, hold on. It's wrong. It always goes to the wrong side. There we go. Uh, I'd made some sweet ass graphics. YouTube.com slash the college experience. We got all six week zero matchups. Obviously by the time, Week zero comes around, it would probably be like eight or nine games. I would assume. I hope so, because it's yeah. a little light right now. No, why so, would that happen? Isn't the schedule pretty locked in at this? No, point? they move dates sometimes. They move dates for for yeah. games. So also um, Thursday and Friday opening week is pretty light too. So I'm I'm hoping we get a couple of these games from Saturday. Yeah, they did move some around Friday. last year on that. Yeah, That's true. Extremely uh, light, but not way. only is it light, it's pretty trash. I mean, maybe, maybe, we, maybe best. we disagree, but I think, no, it's not. No. Zero. Wait, I'm this this is pretty horrible. And, and look, I, you know, cause I'll let you guys go first, you know, uh, I'm, I'm just going to let, I'll let Patty C go first for week one. I'm going to lead the way with week zero because it is a trash late, right? 
So if you're watching youtube.com slash the college experience, you see all six matchups loaded up there. See, my first thought would be, let me take Georgia tech versus Florida state. Oh, you know, this is a rivalry somewhat goes back to the 1950s uh, rooting for Georgia tech because Florida state's being a little bitch about leaving the ACC. And, uh, and look, I look, Florida state only has a four game lead surprisingly and Georgia tech's won two of the last three. That's but very surprising. I can't take that game. Cause it's in Dublin, Ireland. And I hate those fucking neutral site games in another country. Like just doesn't work for me. I was shitting on That's the Eagles true. game in Brazil. Um, I think this is year three of the Dublin game, right? We've had some decent. Well, uh, see, the the Notre Dame Navy game was not decent last year. The one before that was it Northwestern Illini? Was that Northwestern Dublin? Nebraska? Northwestern Nebraska. That was kind of fun. That was decent. Well, and we had like a UCF Penn State game in like the mid two two thousand tens. That was pretty yeah. good. But I, my thing is like I just want to watch games on campus. And to me, it, it devalues the sure. game by going to double. So I'm not picking that as my favorite game that I want to see most. The game I want to see most is in Albuquerque, New Mexico, because Bronco Mendenhall is breaking in his brand new New Mexico Lobos against a FCS power in Montana state. And believe it or not, Montana state does lead the all time series in this matchup. Uh, so I am drafting Montana state at New Mexico week zero. This is a future mountain West game, much more compelling. It's, it's not in this bullshit in Dublin, Ireland. All right. Uh, I, I, I think this game is more interesting because Jordan, it'll be in a half empty stadium in Albuquerque. I don't know. I think Bronco Mendenhall might've ignited the fan base. They have fan do when they want go back and watch the Rocky long era at New Mexico. That shit was sold out. It was a hard environment to go. You see it in basketball. To me, if you see in basketball their their passion, that means they're just waiting for football. It's the reason why I said Kansas was like everyone's laughing at Kansas's uh, you know football fans. If they just get it started, the 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 formula is there. Just get it get it started, and they Wait, have. You're they have saying if they're them. passionate in basketball, they're just waiting for their football program to get it going. That's- yes. Okay. I think there are some states that are basketball states. I mean, I think like they've done recent polling, whatever has, uh, I don't know if Indiana is one, but obviously Kentucky's one, North Carolina. Indiana's got a great, I mean, to me, like if Indiana would ever be good, their fans show up, even when they aren't good, they show up. Yeah. I think it's a decent like football state. Well, and and Kansas, you've seen it with Leipold. They, they were selling out games last year. That's uh, that's, that's, that's the first time it's happened since 07. So true. True. I mean, yeah, I think any state that, you know, could potentially be good at football, their fans are waiting for that. Look but at I would Kentucky say football. Mark most, most states that have shitty football programs and good basketball programs are just waiting for basketball season during football season. But I, uh, I, I think I have a pretty good selection here of look at, we see what Stoops has done with Kentucky, right? Yeah. That to me is, is exhibit a, uh, exhibit B would be Kansas. It's too small of a sample size because I is feel there, like they really got, would you say there's a, a lot of buzz and excitement in Kentucky for Kentucky football right now? I think Kentucky football has actually like surpassed or right on the same level as Kentucky basketball of late. As I fan mean, interest. Kentucky's always going to be a basketball school, but yeah, I mean, they're, they're packing out their stadium that that stadium provides a real live home field advantage now. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's always nice to root on a winner and some states or some schools, you have to have a winner for the fans to show up. But if you have a winner, they will show up. Yeah. Yeah. And to me, there's no pro. And, and then when you add in the, like no pro teams and shit, Albuquerque doesn't have a pro team. Uh, I think it could be the, the biggest show in town. If Bronco Mendenhall can do what I think he can do. Well, we're um, all big Bronco Mendenhall fans, but the game has changed. Has he adapted to the game now? That's a question. I mean, how much has it changed in the last three years? When did he leave UVA? Uh, Are you saying that the portal Uh, and and NIL? So in three years, the game has changed. Has changed a lot. You're right. (laughs) True. True. Very true. This is a future Uh, Mountain West matchup. That's why it's compelling. It's a fun matchup. It is definitely not better than Georgia Tech, Florida State. It is too. (laughs) Very hipster of you, Colby. No, you, you put any. You put any game. At a neutral site, you know I'm going to hate it, <laughs> especially a neutral site that has nothing to do with football. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, uh, we'll have to agree to disagree. But look, it, it is kind of a fun game. There's some storylines that, but you you really have to be deep into college football like us to appreciate that. Your lay fan is not going to give a shit well, about this game. L- let me tell you what Georgia Tech's done re- recently. They've uh, they're reducing their stadium size because no fans show up to their football games. Oh, well, so, well, hold on. We were all just talking on a pod a couple weeks ago about reducing stadium size is usually a good thing. True, but Georgia Tech plays one game at Mercedes Benz every year because they're fucking losers. They don't. They never put football first. I can't take that game seriously. All right. I know you defend the ACC at all costs. Fuck the ACC <laughs> and fuck them playing this game in Ireland. All right. Montana it's not State- even about really the ACC. It's about you have a team that was, you know, should have been in the college football playoffs uh, last year. You have a, uh, and what, well, if I have the second pick, let's just pick Florida State, Georgia Tech, and then I'll go into why. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. No, that's fine. But I'd like another thing is Florida State, Georgia Tech's probably going to be a blowout. Like Montana State, New Mexico is going to be a good game. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be that big of a blowout. Georgia Tech was coming on at the end of the year. I mean, Haynes King, the AM transfer in his first year in Atlanta, he threw for 2,800 plus yards and 30, had 37 total touchdowns. And Florida State lost a ton. Granted, they still have a top five portal class coming in. You got DJ Ukulele coming back to the ACC, but they lost a lot. So they might not be firing on all cylinders. Week zero. I they think brought in I like it, all of Alabama's team. They had, yeah, <laughs> I think they brought in at least five guys from Bama. Um, so I, they're still very talented, but that doesn't mean they're going to be playing great week zero. I think it could be a, a close game. I'm I'm excited to, to see the line. Uh, and you, I, think, you, I think Georgia Tech can hang around. You want to make a little wager that Montana State and New Mexico is closer than Georgia Tech, Florida State? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that helps my argument some because I want to see a good game. With Montana State, New Mexico, and I think Georgia Tech, Florida State might be good for the first half. Who will have the home edge there? I have no idea. This game's stupid. In Ireland, oh, yeah. Florida State's going to travel yeah. more. I, I, you know, just the it, there's much more excitement over the Florida State program right now. Um, but if I, you're I telling me, if you're telling just, me Georgia Tech's getting 14, I, I might take the points. I just feel like, at least when you had Notre Dame there, it made a little sense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, okay, they're Notre Dame fans. Like, this is just random. It's like, why it not is. play this game in Chile? You know what I mean? Like, what? And the uh, whole point of this is you got Florida State f- fresh off their, you know, undefeated regular season and conference championship game, uh, and they're the, playing in the first game of the season. You know, and, and probably, you know, wanting to write the write the ship after that last bowl game, the worst loss in bowl history. So. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Florida State is definitely trying to prove something this year. So, as far as a week zero game and an otherwise un- un- uneventful slate, I have to agree with Nick that this is the game you're watching, even if it's not going to be a competitive game, just because Florida State is a championship contender. Uh, Nevada was what, or no, uh, New Mexico four and eight, not an exciting program. Um, still, I would much rather like if they're both on at the same time and I'm not in the studio, I'm watching Montana State, New Mexico all day. I do like the future Mountain West uh, angle. Um, you got to figure at some point that invites coming from Montana State. Just the fan interest. Like I said, I think New Mexico will pack this because Bronco Mendenhall is actually a fucking huge hire for them. Yeah. <laughs> like the other coaches they've done over the past like 15 years have been like, who? Who? Right. Who? I mean, we, we, saw, who? we saw Jerry Kill at New Mexico State and we were like, okay, that's a huge hire. I think uh, Mendenhall is a more proven coach than Jerry Kill is. You know, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. What do you think? What do you guys think about? Well, that? I think he's. A, I, I I think they're s- similar to me, but I, like from a, the lay fan, I think knows Bronco Mendenhall. A he was in agree. Utah, killing it at Utah. Uh, I'm sorry, or at BYU. BYU. And uh, and to me, that that fan base will know that they you know they were in the Mountain West back when Bronco Mendenhall was coach of BYU. Well, so, I'm curious as to when we get to our Week One rankings because there are some very good. Neutral site games there. I wonder if Colby's going to have. Like, oh yeah, they all you know. suck, <laughs> and they're all in domes. I, I hate them all. I hate them all. Like I will not be super excited about watching those games. All um, right, Patty C. What I know, there's only what three more games left, but I think we know what you're going to take here, right? Or four. More I, games I don't think you know what I'm going to take here because I don't really know what I'm going to take here. Uh, I, no, I didn't know. It's, it's I, pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. Wait, is it? I, well, I don't know. Well, Colby could go FCS hipster on us next. No, I, I think this one it, it goes in order. Like I, I think uh, SMU Nevada. SMU is what, at Nevada. Yeah. 
Nevada was yeah. terrible last year. SMU but was great. Hire, but their you hire to... was great. Their hire was great. Nevada. Uh, who Jeff did, who Chote did... coming in. He's the guy who built Montana State. He was Texas's defensive coordinator, and Texas defense was fire last year. That's true. Okay, but do I expect him to have that program turned around in week one against what is now a power four team uh, in SMU? And 11 and three last year, Nevada two portal, and 10 with the portal. I think he could definitely make it more of a game than I bet. This game is 45 to nothing really early in the third quarter, early in the third quarter. You think the, SMU is a lot better than me. Well, here's what I think SMU and you hated on SMU all last year and every they had the single easiest week. schedule, dude. They well, and they went 11 and three against it and they hung 70 points uh, and they were in the, you know, uh, above the 50 range a bunch of times. So this team and they can lost score. To Boston College in the bowl. As, game. Well, especially against <laughs> inferior competition, uh, this team can score a lot of points, and so I would anticipate that being the case against Nevada. Is, Patty C is Charlotte a good team? They were three and nine last year, right? Yeah. I mean, Charlotte. SMU only beat them by what? Eighteen. <laughs> ECU is a two like eighteen. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you said forty five nothing, right? Oh, ECU no. is a two win team. That was a twenty one uh -oh. point game. I'm in <laughs> Afghanistan again. <laughs> here we go. Uh, Look, let me jump in here and say that. Well, I do think the Nevada hire was was a, a very good hire, but they are coming off of back to back two win seasons. They did hit the portal pretty hard, bringing in 16 recruits. They ranked third best portal class in the conference. But I think the more interesting side of this is SMU because they are now P4. They are they finally got their invite to a major conference. And they're taking sports very seriously. So we want to see how they're going to do in football and basketball. But uh, especially on the road, look, winning on the road is hard. But I don't think they're going to have much of a problem with Nevada. But that's one of the reasons why it's a pretty interesting game. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, obviously, yeah, I mean, Nick brings up a good point. You know, competitiveness is something that obviously Colby's going to value uh, probably more than anything. But for a team that has high expectations to showcase their abilities, that is something worth watching. And it, and it does provide some level of entertainment. So I think, uh, I think that that makes this game a little more compelling than at least the rest of the slate. Um, yeah, definitely. I'm going to jump it's off. I'll be back. <laughs> okay. Another reason is, is that Nevada has been a great program over the past 25 years. Like I understand they had two bad years, I don't think it's that hard to fix. And the funny thing is that if you listen to us two years ago, I think we all agreed that Ken Wilson was probably the worst hire of the uh, of that offseason yeah. across the whole college football landscape. I didn't think that was going to work out. Sure enough, we get a lot of these right. We get some of them wrong. This one was right. Ken Wilson was not the man for the job. I do think you're probably right. I love the successful FCS coach jumping up to a Mountain West school. I think Chote is going to do well there, but it might take a little bit of time. And they've had success against power schools there they in Reno. Like sure. when power schools have come to Reno, they've had, they've had some big time wins. I remember they beat Purdue a couple yeah. years ago, Jeff yeah. Brown, they beat Purdue. Um, uh, all right. So it goes back to me for pick four. I am not taking Delaware state, Hawaii. I am not taking actually, I, yeah, I, I'm going to go Norfolk state, Florida, A and M. Now I know, uh, this game, actually, no, no, I'm not. This is in Atlanta. <laughs> I, I feel go, like uh, for I don't know, maybe maybe I stand corrected. I don't watch enough, uh, you know, <laughs> low level <laughs> FCS football to appreciate the the on campus experience. Although, obviously, with HBCU football, generally pretty great environment. Often though, that's in a dome. You know, you think about uh, Grambling versus uh, Southern. In a dome. Yeah, no, but that, that's about it. <laughs> Neutral site right? location. <laughs> yeah. I mean. um, I, I'm going to go to Montgomery, Alabama. This is another neutral site, but I'll go North Alabama, Southeast Missouri. Uh, North Alabama was a fucking just a blue blood in D2 that jumped up to D1 recently. Um, they're in the FCS. They had their struggles last year, but they still like, I think they, they have potential long term. That game's in Montgomery, Alabama against SEMO. SEMO's been an FCS playoff team, I think, very often. So uh North Alabama go going for the, the big opponents in the FCS. I dig it. 
I think this game will probably be closer than people think. Cause I think North Alabama, even if you watch that, that season opener last year, they kept it close with Mercer. Uh, so I think that's the, the, the fourth best game here. I don't think we need to spend a whole lot of time ranking these last couple ones. I'm not too excited about that game. I I, I might catch a little bit of it. Uh, I, I'd North rather Alabama go... Simo <laughs> Nick that doesn't <laughs> move the needle for you. Uh, no, not so much. I mean, I'd rather go Delaware State, Hawaii, our Hornets traveling mm -hmm. in little ocean battle, Honolulu. Atlantic and, against Pacific. Look, Hawaii go. won three of their last four games last year. Uh, Timmy Chang is doing better than we thought. I do believe Shager bombs the quarterback is coming back. So uh, there's reason to be excited about this Rainbow Warrior program. Yeah. So Patty, see that sticks you with uh, Norfolk State, Florida A and M, but this that's a that's an old school rivalry. It's just in that filthy Mercedes Benz Stadium. <laughs> um, well, Florida A and M may uh, end up finding themselves there at the end of the uh, regular season for the Celebration Bowl. Um, well, 2023, they went 12 and one. I'm drawing a blank on how uh, how they ended that season. Was that? Um, was they, that a, a celebration they got it bowl done. loss? They beat Howard. No, they won the celebration bowl 30 to 26. Won um, the hell the celebration bowl. Okay, so it's their, they were just there in their last game. They're coming back as the HBCU They were 12 and 1 last year. 12 and 1. 12 only, one. Yeah, sir. Their only loss was to South Florida in a good game against your boys. Um right. but they did lose Willie Simmons. He's now Duke's running backs coach and I think co-OC. Mm. Um and now Great they liar. go Oh, and by the way, this game is not at the Mercedes Benz. It's at Center Park Stadium where Dale Murphy used to hit dingers. So this hey. game just got a lot better. <laughs> got a right. lot better. At least it's um, out outdoors. <laughs> and, Still a neutral site. It is a neutral site, but uh, you know, the college football hall of fame's there. I feel like this one, like I said, if Georgia Tech, Florida State was in, you know, just it, even if it was in like Indianapolis, I would feel like uh weird, but Dublin? That, that's a um, dome. At, well, at least Dublin's outdoors. Well, you can play. You can play outdoors. You don't have to play it. I'm, I'm saying that there's play other the spots. Stadium. <laughs> yeah, you can play at the Butler Stadium. Uh, well, but, that, that uh, makes an uh, interesting point. Florida, Florida A and M is from Tallahassee, right? Yes. Yeah, and then so the trip to Atlanta is four hours twenty eight minutes by Google Maps at right at this moment. Um, so pretty close, pretty regional, you know. And Georgia Tech, if they were playing against Florida State in Atlanta. It makes sense that 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 should be a bigger rivalry than it is Atlanta versus North Florida. Um, but uh, even with Norfolk State coming down, you know, to a neutral site location, they're both close enough that, you know, you might get a lot of fans at this game. Could be a compelling matchup, even though Florida A&M clearly the much better program. Like you said, though, new coach maybe uh, opens the door for a closer game. And I think people can't forget the Florida a and beat Norfolk state 84 to 14 in 1998. NC Nick still talks about that one, but <laughs> Norfolk state won the last one. Remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> All right, let's hop on over to week one. But before we hop over to week one, I want to tell you the college football experience is brought to you by underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Uh, they have college football props and, and uh, you should definitely check that out. Pick whether your high, uh, your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you can enter in a single night, pick between two and five players to build your pick them entry. Uh, and uh, yeah, do that. Sign up with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars, as well as an instant pick them special visit underdog fantasy.com or find them in the app store. Don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pick them special. All right. We are back on the college football experience and here we go. Shout out to Dave in the chat says you don't shit on Bob Davey. He was running the option, which I did appreciate. He got him bowling. He got him bowling. Um, all right, let's go to week one. Look, I put, I got just sheets and sheets of uh, week one matchups here. Every game on the slate, folks. Man, that's that's pretty busy. Yes. Now, I think we're gonna stay here for the beginning of this, if I had to guess. But uh, Patty, see, I'm putting you on the clock for you know top play for week one, the game you want to see most. YouTube.com/slash the college experience. You see graphics for every single matchup of week one. Cause we don't fuck around on the college football experience. So uh, yeah. What's your, uh, what's the game you want to see most Patty C? Well, there is the obvious pick and there are a couple really good ones, but I'm going to throw a curveball at you guys to start this bad boy off. 
Oh, man. Here we go. We are going <laughs> for an in-state matchup, right? That will likely determine whether at least one coach is fired at the mm. end of the season. I am talking about the Miami Hurricanes going to Gainesville. Swamp to play, ass. Yeah. <laughs> to going to the Swamp Pass to play the Florida Gators. Billy Napier on the hot seat. Um, you know, things are uh, things haven't going, been going great for Mario Cristobal. The, the fans want uh, progress from Miami. So uh, I, I think, you know, a, a loss for either team is a terrible start to the season and, you know, could result in a spiral out of control for both teams. But a but, uh, uh, counter to that, uh, to contrary to that, a win would be huge for both teams. Uh, this series dates back to 1938. Miami has the all time series lead, but Florida has won two of three. Um, look, I, 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 there's no way to me, Billy Napier survives this season with Florida's schedule. But if you get a win here, build a little bit of momentum because I think they have Samford and then a and M in the swamp again. I think starting your season off hot is the key because if to me, if he loses to Miami or a and M, I think it's going to be very hard to get out of get out of there this season being the head coach of the Gators. So NC Nick, I I, I don't know about you, but I, I do love this matchup. I think this matchup is way better than a couple of those neutral site games that Patty C passed on. Well, I mean, off the bat, Patty C's best game pits a seven and five team from last year against a five and seven team from last year. <laughs> well, uh, no, this game should not be number one. Uh, I think you're living in the nineties, Patty. I think uh, uh, I might be living in the two thousands when uh, Florida had two national championships and Miami had one and a, no, I think you, I think you peaked. I think you peaked in high school. (laughs) 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 Been all downhill since. And you're Uh, hoping this game still has national implications. Uh, Like it's a top 10 game. Maybe you could even argue top five just because it is an in-state battle. The two teams are still talented, but Dude, there's better games week one than Miami at Florida. Graham Mertz against games. Cam Ward. Nah, Sounds exciting solid. to me. There solid. might be better games. There might be better games, but there might not. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think this is a bad play. I think it could be considered the top play. I, I didn't have it number one. Insane. I didn't have it number one, but I there are games that have five. higher higher championship stakes, but I don't know that there are games that have higher, you know, future of the program stakes. Uh quite frankly, I think Florida Florida might be rooting for, rooting for themselves to lose this to get rid of Napier and get on with it. Get Never against Miami. That. They'll root against AM maybe for them to lose, but not not the Miami. Not against Miami. It means something. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Miami has a two game series lead all time. Florida gets this win. They're, they're going to get there. It's almost even. It's almost Drawing even. Ever um, closer. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Florida wins too. Uh, but and still doesn't have a very good year, especially with how hard their schedule is. Uh, so look, I think both games. coaches suck at in-game management. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but yeah. it's just a curveball. I'm throwing a curveball. Let's go to the obvious one. No, I, Patty. See, I think yours is worthy. I think yours is worthy. I, I'm I'm not like Nick. I think it's to me top five. Playing a top five game, I think you can argue it. And I'll 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 shit on the other games that uh, NC Nick <laughs> deems so great. NC Nick, you're on the clock. All right. Well, I mean, you know, there's a there's one game that pits two two teams that have combined for four of the eight last national champions. So I think that's a pretty big. One, game. one team is clearly gone, though. They they've dipped down. Yes, I won't I won't pick that game. I'll save that so Colby has to not pick it because he's not going to. Well, my number one's still out there. Well, I'll say my Notre Dame Texas A and M Sunday by itself. Sunday? Uh, no, no, no. That's Saturday. Sunday is is uh, LSU USC, I believe. Why did I write Sunday next to this game? Someone's got okay. a case of the no. Sundays. Oh yeah. man, I, I'm not in in mid season form just yet. Uh, <laughs> so that game is Saturday. It's a not okay, not quite as good, but still, it's an excellent game. It's on campus uh, in College Station. You have the Mike Elko, you know, first game at A and M. They just paid a shit ton of money, you know, to to get Jimbo Fisher out of town and to hire him. He's going up against. Well, well, I don't get. Sorry, going up against Riley Leonard, his old quarterback at Duke. Uh, this is a very fun game. It's a very important game, you know, for both schools. I think it's a great game, and definitely, I mean, these two teams are going to win. Probably be, be around the nine or ten wins this year, where Miami and Florida, both those teams are going to be around five hundred. 
that was my number one rated game was Notre Dame at Texas A and M. A because we just talked on Notre Dame's shitty schedule. They win this. I do think they can run the table. Uh I favor A and M, but I also think A and M's a legit playoff contender this year. I actually have them in my playoff. Uh so I think it's a huge game because you're gonna have two playoff teams going at it. I can't say the same about any other game on this schedule, in my opinion. Um so uh that's why it was the number one rated game for me. I, I'm fascinated by, like you said, you add the, the the spice on top of it, whether it's the chat talking about Bob Davey, who who was a, who coached at both, <laughs> or uh or the fact that uh that you know Riley Leonard played under Mike Elko. Elko knows him and Elko is, is now AM's DC. Elko was previously the DC of Notre Dame before I'm sorry. Elko's the head coach of A&M. He was previously the DC at A&M. Left Notre Dame to go to A&M. So a lot of uh, familiarity. Angle. Yeah. So I I love that. I think it's the best game of the week. Cannot wait for that matchup. Um, well, and let, by let the me, way, let me that? assert this. You said not two months ago that it is a shoe in that Texas A&M beats Notre Dame in this game. I, I question that highly. You got a and I, I think Notre Dame. I feel pretty good about it. If it was All in right. South Bend, I would, I would, I would uh, hesitate a little more. I think a is going to beat the shit out of Notre Dame. Ooh. Well, uh, Riley Leonard was injured for the summer, right? Or, or for the yeah. spring, I should say, I guess. Um, so you ready for my score prediction? 31, 21, A&M gets it done. Wow. Wow. Early prediction, uh, April 10th. Uh, let's see if that one comes true. That would be crazy. We always talk about the importance of the transfer portal. A and M brought in twenty four transfers, second ranked transfer class in the country. And so then you add that to the number one recruiting class. Come on, Elko, Elko, you pr- he proved what he could do at Duke with shit talent, right. and how quickly he could turn it around. Yeah, it was instant, yeah, right did. away. You're yeah. right. Uh, shout out to the chat, James saying, what do you think the, the spread will be for SMU Nevada? It'll be big. It will be like 21 points if I had to guess or 18 points or something like that, but, uh, I'll take the points. And, uh, Billy Delish says what books offer FCS lines. There's a bunch. I mean, win bet was one we were using for a while, but there there's, there's a decent amount of them out. You know, FCS betting has gotten easier and easier. Much, I'd be, much, I would be surprised if like DraftKings and FanDuel don't don't have some of that this year. They do. They, well, they even had it last year. They would add it really yeah. late, like Friday yeah. night. But even that's gotten better. It's gotten better and better each week. So, um, uh, my pick. Oh, by the way, God damn it! I'm forgetting to do the NFL draft. Uh, you know, music over here. <laughs> I'm taking you to Morgantown. I think this game is super compelling. I think Neil Brown just got a contract extension. The Big 12, you know, a lot of people have been shitting on the new Big 12, saying they don't have marquee programs that can't, you know, the bit it's all about the Big 10, SEC, and even the ACC still has marquee programs like Miami, Florida State, uh Clemson and and uh you know, I don't know if you want to level over. programs. Well, I mean, I would push back and say, "Hey, I mean, Come on, Utah has fucking been knocking on the door. They've had undefeated seasons. The Colorado Buffaloes have won a national championship, you know, in in not that long ago. Kansas All State's right. been close. Yeah, I mean, uh, West Virginia's had great years, very close. And Cincinnati I think was in the playoffs three years ago. I, I, I think, think that we all have to admit that thirty years ago was pretty long ago. <laughs> well, fuck. Well, fuck. If they're gonna claim Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech's never won a national championship. <laughs> The fuck? I mean, yeah. uh, 25 like, years co- ago, <laughs> Colorado, Colorado went from 1987 to 2005 ranked every fucking year. Uh, well, first of all, I don't know who yeah. they are saying Virginia tech is like a premier program. Cause they're well, they're, not. Yeah. Yeah. When I say they are saying the inner, the interwebs as George W says, but <laughs> uh, I hear there's rumors on the, uh, internets. Um, I think this is a big statement game. We saw West Virginia. That game was a lot closer last year. Penn state ran it up. James Franklin. This is in Morgantown. The couches will be burning. It's a rivalry game. You know, I love rivalry games here. Uh, I think the big 12 can make a big fucking statement with the win here against Penn state who some say, remember if you, if you look at the big 10 scheduling with them, no longer having divisions, Penn state could end up winning the big, like I'm not going to say that they will. Cause I like Ohio state's path the best. But it, they could end up playing in the Big Ten championship, and you're sitting there saying, well, "Wouldn't that be crazy if that was?" But they had a loss to West Virginia in the non-con. 
huge game in West Virginia. Yes. They were a veteran team last year along the line of scrimmage elsewhere. They were young. So I know they got to repair the line of scrimmage, but they get the quarterback back. They get some Which skill position players that, back. Is that a win? Is is being Drew Alar back a win for Penn State? Uh, I'm saying West Virginia. Oh, West, West Virginia, Virginia. Getting, oh, yeah, yeah, getting Garrett Green uh, back. Um, but yeah, I mean, our, Alar on the road needs to prove it to me. I think this is a fucking awesome game. And I think West Virginia, I think they're a live dog. Very much so. Very much so. I agree with you. The fact that it's in Morgantown does make this game hugely entertaining. I mean, we saw West Virginia opening weekend against Pittsburgh and, you know, not the, the Penn state, West Virginia is in the backyard brawl, but I do expect, you know, some passion to be here because it has to still matter. It's a border battle, baby. And these are two proud state flagship schools. I just find it funny that like you, Kobe mentioned the big 12 can make a big statement here. This conference talk is ridiculous. It's, it's West Virginia versus Penn state. It's not yeah, the no, Big 12 I, versus the Big 10 in what, this matchup. I know, but one of the narratives I've seen, like, and I'm not saying one person, I'm saying like multiple reports is that the Big 12 has no heavy heavyweights. And I'm, I, I guess I'm not surprised if it's national reporters, ESPN people that that want the you know the big the big name schools. But I think most people, most real college football fans know that the Big 12 is still a very strong conference. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I mean well, that, that but What's I would say to an extent, the big 12 does have that perception issue though, even among like the, those in the know, you know, non-casuals, so to speak, uh, non-snorkelers, deep divers even might have some concerns. Is the big 12, let me ask you this. Is the big 12 going to win a national championship in the next 10 years? I think so. Under its well, I don't know. I, it depends because the, you know, the, there's this thing with staffing that is about to get overturned or it's up to get overturned where teams can have unlimited staff. If, if this gets overturned, then the amount of money, the sec and big 10 make, they will literally be able to hire every great coach ever on their staff. Yeah. And I think that could be very, you know, I, I mean, what's the point where having one extra coach matters? Well, also, <laughs> you know? well, it could be one extra coach. That would be a defensive coordinator though. Cause that money gap yeah. could be huge. Like the defense coordinator for an ACC or big 12 team could end up being a, you know, position coach. For Texas, or, I think or, Patty C's yeah. question was great. Uh, I'd probably lean towards no, uh, but if you ask me, like how many in, la in the next decade, put the number at like eight and a half national champions come from the SEC or the Big Ten? Would you go over or under? I, that's how drastic things may get. I'm going under on that. I, I, I think with Kobe? access. With access, we're going to see some upsets. We've been talking about that for a long time. I think that that will come true. I think you can see some first round upsets in the in the new college football playoff, but can a team from the Big Twelve or even the ACC, you know, like a a pretty good team, win like three tough playoff games in a row? That'll be the question. But sometimes the path could be, you know, when you have a bigger playoff, you, you get a bigger like was Alabama a top four team in college basketball this year? I don't think so. They just had a great path. And to me, if you you put a I don't know Oklahoma State or Houston or whoever. In, you get them into the playoffs and let's say they do pull the upset, but let's say another upset happens and they're playing the, in the second round, they're playing uh Virginia tech. You know what I mean? So I see your point, but I don't know if it's a great comparison with college basketball because college basketball, you just, you can just get hot from three and the team, you know, college football is different where like line play. You, matters okay, so much. You see it in the FCS though. Sometimes you'll get a lucky path. So uh, shit. Towson played for the FCS championship. Not that long ago. They weren't the second best team. It yeah. was a great path. You know? Generally speaking, oh. even in the FBS, there's only one or two super dominant teams in any given year. So if you just avoid them until the last until the semifinals and you pull an upset or two, then I think All I right. think it can happen. Let's do this. OK, so I my original number has already been bet down. How about seven and a half? Would you still go under? No, yes. I think I, I don't know. I don't think I would I really think I would go seven. I think I would go seven. I think uh, it's that, well, yeah, I think it's I think it's probably eight. I think eight might be the right number. Notre Dame is an interesting player in this conversation. That's true. So is the ACC. <laughs> yeah, well, if the ACC exists in five years, <laughs> that is true. That, uh, um, all bets are off at that point. Well, anyway, if they exist in two years, um, but anyway, that that's my that's my my third pick. Uh, One more Steve. point about <laughs> that game. Sorry, they, these two teams, they played every year from 1940 to 1992. 
And then, you know, conference realignment bullshit. Penn State joined yeah. the Big Ten. They had a 31 year break before last year's game. So I love seeing this game back on the schedule. Uh, so it's uh, it's a well played game. And yep. you know, Neil Brown knows they ran it up and they didn't have to. That was a dickhead move by James Franklin. Well, they're trying to cover that spread. Dickhead move by James Franklin. So, no, no, no. Go. It, Go ahead. Uh, Patty C, you're on the clock. So, wait. Uh, we had, I played Miami, Florida first. Then uh, you played Notre Dame, uh, AM. And then uh, Penn State, Colby played West Virginia. Penn State, yeah. West Virginia. So obviously, okay. Good job, Colby, avoiding this uh, TMZ game. Obviously, it's the fucking best, most impactful game of the weekend. I'm going to take it. We're going to Atlanta. We're going to the Mercedes Benz uh, Dome, whatever it is. And uh, Clemson versus Georgia. You know, in in a, in a yeah. super matchup. See, this one sucks because you could just play it at home and home. They, they, I know they played the other year in Charlotte, which sucked too. But this one sucks even more because it's it's Mercedes Benz Stadium. But I'm not like to me, this is better than LSU USC because at least there is a rivalry to this. Like they've been they've played a lot of fucking years together. Yeah. Uh and believe it or not, Clemson almost beat that Georgia team. You know, if if, if they don't throw a pick six. Yeah. Or no, Weren't no, JT no Daniels no offensive pick six. 10 7. I think it was 10 7, right? Yeah. Um, uh Clemson was in that thing. So Dabo still not really using the portal. I that's why I personally think I just watched a little bit of their spring game. Yeah. <laughs> They're on the decline. They're on the decline to me. Um, I still find the matchup fun, though, even though I hate it as a corporate NFL game. Um but it, it, it it's a, it's an awesome it's an it's still like I love the regionality to it. It's dripping with syrup, baby. It is obviously this is like a top three game. It, play, getting played at four is kind of a crime. I mean, I'll repeat this out I mentioned earlier. Play it on it, campus. It's top three. Yeah, I, I mean, they definitely should. I, no argument there. But I'll repeat the stat I said. These two teams have combined for four of the last eight national champions. So it's a but great dude, game. you can't you got to admit also though that Clemson has fucking lost a step. No, of course. I mean they're they're still winning like nine, ten games a year. So it's not a they have lost even a big that, step. Even they at that, they're, they're not blowing out teams. They're winning by three, true. by six. It's not like they yeah. pulled a TCU and went from the national championship game to going five and seven. Okay, true. true but I, I'm just saying, I think the the proof when you watch the games, you realize that Clemson is just not that good anymore. Yeah. I, I I don't know if it's swinging and missing on, on high school talent, you know, or it's, it's the loss of coordinators or it's just the game is different and they're not addressing needs via the portal compared to other teams that are, they were uh, nine, they were nine and four last year with a five point win against a terrible w uh, wake forest team. Right. Uh, an eight point win against Notre Dame, a, a nine That's point win against impressive. South Carolina. That is impressive. The, the Notre Dame game, but you give Notre Dame a lot more credit than I do. A uh, three point three win against year. Kentucky, a, th a, th a three point win against Kentucky. So like to me that when you go back to those championship Clemson and overtime loss against a 13 and oh Florida state team that we all agree should have been in the playoffs. Uh, but they still lost to Miami, that, Florida. Okay. Yeah. That was a bad loss. I'm not saying they're fucking great, but their losses are at Duke who was good last year. Uh, Florida State, who was wait, very wait, good. Wait, last wait, year. wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. You can't just brush over that game. They lost to Duke. Yeah, Clemson I mean, that's, doesn't lose to Duke. Are are they a national? Were they a national championship contender last year? Not at all. Not at all. No, yes, I, I don't think step. any. Nobody's arguing that they haven't lost a stop a step. I mean, I, I think everybody agrees that it's not the same team program as it was five six years ago. Well, yeah, yeah but and, what I, it, and I, I, I would think, say. Yeah, go ahead. They, Sorry. No, they still don't have like a premier quarterback. To me, like they they just don't have the players that they use. The receivers have been shitty lately. And they don't right. use the portal. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to be better. Well, that is true, but I do believe that you know player development is a uh, is, is something that can work. I know we had a big argument about this last year, and Kate Klubnik is bound to improve with you know year two. Usually quarterbacks take a big step forward. I think by the end of year one, I think he took a big step forward. I mean, what Clemson won their last one. Go watch the spring game. Five games. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I he, he seems solid. He doesn't seem like uh, an NFL starting quarterback. Like, well, yeah, his, his I think were. 
just talent wise. I think raw talent wise, he doesn't, you know, jump off the screen as an NFL talent, but he, he, he did have uh, moments where he shined last year. And I think with some consistency, uh, Clemson becomes a much less mistake prone team. And, you know, are they going to hang with Georgia? Do I think so? No, but most, uh, I mean, I think Georgia's the favorite for the national championship next year. Any other team, I think Clemson, pretty much any other team in the country, it wouldn't shock me if Clemson pulled an upset on. Do, do, do you think they miss Venables? Probably, yes. It hasn't been the defense slipping that much, though. Well, it, 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 well it might be this year because that you want to talk about what they lost. They lost everyone good on the defensive side of the ball. Now, I'm not saying they're going to be bad. Maybe they reload. But you're right. To me, it's the playmaking. They haven't had elite running back play or wide receiver play or quarterback play and especially offensive line play. Yeah. They, they really miss uh, their, the OC that went to UVA. <laughs> Tony Elliott, maybe. Yeah. Oh, Tony Elliott. Thank you. The Brandon Streeter got fired, you know, uh, Jeff Scott. Uh, I think he, I think they rehired him, but no, I look, I think you played it correctly. I think it should be in this spot at number four. I don't think it should be Thank top you. three. I think it should be number four. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I can't really take credit for, you know, that being a great pick, but thank you, Colby. <laughs> I would have this one over the Miami, uh, the Miami versus Florida game, but hey, I mean, agree to disagree. All right, NC Nick, you are on the clock. Well, you did mention it earlier. I'll go LSU at USC. I mean, two brand name football programs with national appeal. Uh, Third all time me, meeting. It reminds me of that LSU UCLA game a few years ago, which which is. Is famous around the SGPN well, studios. It's not <laughs> called that it's, one. It's, call that one. Not, it, it, there's a big difference. There's a big difference. It's not at UCLA like that one, and it's not at USC. It is right. in Las Vegas. So right. But uh, also, I mean, is Lincoln Riley on the hot seat? Um, LSU's. Brian, a, you, know, you can make a case. Brian Kelly's on the hot seat. Not yet. I mean, his quarterback just won the Heisman, but their defense was so bad last year. It was so but, uh, bad last year. And he did I just mean, lose that. They so. fired Orgeron, what, a year and a half after winning the championship? True. You don't think both Brian these, so, Kelly's on the hot seat? So both these coaches enter year three. I, I don't think Brian Kelly is quite on the hot seat yet. I think if he has another, let's say, an eight win season, then, then maybe he's starting to warm up some. Uh, I think Lincoln Riley, on the other hand, I think his his seat is already hot. Yes. And they have a new athletic director, too, which makes it hotter naturally. Yeah. Um, What did man, USC I, what, do two years ago? This Weren't could they be at? so great if it was on campus, though. Both stadiums, yeah. Baton yeah. Rouge or the Coliseum, like classic venues, and you decide to play it at this bullshit NFL corporate nonsense fucking toaster oven. Uh, yeah, this is the biggest yeah. swing and miss from a venue standpoint of any of the games that we've talked about so far. I mean, going to Dublin is one thing when no team has any you know, connection to Dublin, but this is like, like you just said, these are two amazing venues and uh, you know, they would both get up for this game. And instead you go to some, yeah, toaster oven, some best buy. <laughs> yeah. But I'll say it for this game though. Cause I thought the other game was Sunday. <laughs> this is the Sunday game by itself. Every college football fan in America is going to be watching this game. Very yes, true. and I'll and I'll reiterate a point that we made a lot last year. Failure, all these college idiots, all these TV execs, failure. Put more than there's no NFL on Sunday. Put more than one fucking game on Sunday and Monday and put better games on Thursday and Friday. I mean, right now, all we ask. Not even Thursday and Friday. There's no like you could do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Oh, yeah, it's not, not like classes in session. Schedule the fucking games. Come on. T if you're going to put Rutgers and UCLA in the same conference, at least give us football six, seven days a week. I agree. Um, now guys after it. So we get to the top five. Now I think it's wide open. I think you, you can go in. I don't know who I'm not sure who's up. Is it Colby? You, I think you can go in any direction here. I think it is. It is my, my pick, but I mean, you know, I'm a Homer here. <laughs> you know, I'm a Homer. All right. Actually, no, I'm intrigued by the game going on in Houston, Texas, Houston. <laughs> I am taking UNLV at Houston because UNLV Barry Odom had an amazing first year. I'm sorry. Hang on. I, I forgot that I'll do the draft music next time. All right. It's easy to see a tide turn. I did not think UNLV would be that good. Now, yes. Was it a nice schedule? And it was a kind of a phony performance in my opinion, but they still won the games. 
they still won the game. Do I think they were as good as their record? I don't, but that was year one for Barry Odom. Vegas hasn't been good since fucking John Robinson and Jason Thomas or, 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 or Randall Cunningham and fucking Icky woods. Um, they're, they got a little momentum. They got a little momentum right now and they head to Houston, Texas, take on Willie Fritz, who I think could make Houston very good long-term. Um, I'm fascinated by this matchup. I think it's better than a couple other matchups just because I think you could have, I mean, UNLV is a program that I think could be headed in, in as if they can continue to win, I think they'll probably end up in the big 12. Um, Houston is to me, I mean, shit, you saw it when they were part of a power conference, they played for a national championship in 79. Then college football decided to abandon them. Not that long ago, right? (laughs) Well, I'm just saying when they were part of the party, they went to a national championship, Texas A&M still ain't sniffed the national championship. All right. And now they're back being a part of the party. So watch out because I think Willie Fritz can capitalize that. I know we talk a lot about Mike Elko and the hire at a and M. Where do you put that Willie Fritz hire at Houston NC Nick? I think it's a good hire. I mean, what he did at Tulane, I mean, what's not to like there. So I, I do think it was a, a good hire, but I'm going to take you to task again. I don't think this belongs at number six. What's better uh, than that? I think this is a good game and it was certainly on my list. I'm actually kind of excited for some of the reasons that, that you mentioned. I would have at least five other games higher than this. There's some weekday games. Uh, yeah, I think I think you're reaching a little bit here. I don't know, Patty. Do you agree with me? Or of course, or I have... agree with you. I think <laughs> uh, Hipster game, Colby though? is in fucking uh, late championship form Wait, here. I was, well, I, we'll get game? there. We'll get there when we. When, I, I almost pick. drafted North Dakota State, Colorado. I think that game's better. That yeah, game's more it is better. I don't know. I, I wouldn't better. have had a problem with that. Dude, you and Houston went to the Sugar Bowl a couple years ago, and you and I won what ten or eleven games last year. Nine. You, uh, nine. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I'm already trying to uh, make the game. No, I, I was the really first is. to say they were a phony ass team, <laughs> but uh, they played for the Mountain West Championship. I think Houston with Willie Fritz will instantly be uh, a bowl team. Why? I, I don't know how you sell me on like it being a big gap between that and North Dakota State, Colorado, and I love the North Dakota State, Colorado mm. game, but they've I also never. A- between those two games. Really? However, Colorado I, I won four games last year. Colorado, though, stands to take a major step forward. Deion Sanders at uh what? Uh Jackson State went six and six in year one and went like eleven and one or ten and two, whatever it was in year two. It when you bring in that level of talent and you then you have continuity uh to go along uh, with it. I look, I, I'm a Colorado fan. You don't need to sell me on that, but I would say UNLV and Houston are both further along than North Dakota State and Colorado right now. Houston went four and eight last year. They they I took a step. Say, I was I was about to pull up Houston's record and say that wasn't any, much better than Colorado's. If uh, anything, the the thing that's compelling about this game is that UNLV uh, a the re- relative regionality, the southwestern vibe of this game. You know, Nevada and Houston, but uh, I think that Nevada, the fact that UNLV could win and that would be a major another major step for their program you know, toward whether that be the big 12 or I guess they're already in the mountain West. So maybe, but yeah, maybe, maybe a big 12 invite eventually for UNLV. This would be a nice win for them if they could do that, but they got to go to Houston to do it. Yeah. And that's, I mean, I don't know. I I think you guys are off on this one. Um, I think Houston football has earned it over the past 10 to 15 years. You're looking at a four and eight season where we all knew uh, what's his name was getting fired. All right. Um, You look at the history They've been very good over the past, you know, 10, 12 years of college football. Oh yeah. They're a good program. And and that's why I think it is turnkey in a way, because look the year before eight and five, then 12 and two. Now they did have two shitty years when Holgerson first came. That 12 and two was, was in the American on on, still a very good team. It was, but on the easier side of the American, I think they dodged, they dodged Natty in the the regular season. I want to say you're right. But at the same time, if you're going to say that, then let's not forget that the 2019 season where he redshirted the whole fucking team. All right. When he came in, he redshirted De'Ara King. He redshirted everybody. And, and that, so throw that one out. Then look before 
13 and one in 2015, 13 and one in 2011, 10 and four in 2006. They've earned it. They're a good team. UNLV, UNLV is the team that hasn't earned it. Right. Yeah. So, well, that's, so are they a flash in the pan or not? I mean, yeah, that, that's why it is. It's an interesting matchup. You just, you just play it too soon, buddy. I disagree. <laughs> Clearly. Too soon, uh, Junior. Yeah. Um, Anyone right, made the movie? Uh, Come on. Is that uh, Billy Madison? Furious. You can't oh. win. <laughs> I, I don't know um, any quotes from the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> it's probably a good one. All right. Uh, it goes to Patty C, right? Am I crazy here? Yeah. Yep. You're right. Um, and I'm going to play the game we just talked about. Sorry if I'm stealing anyone's thunder. There are some other very good games that are, I don't know. Oh, gosh. They involve the same areas of the map. Two, I, I imagine these will be the next two games played. Um, I'm going to play the team. I'm going to play the more TMZ game here, and but it's still an awesome matchup. We're going to go North Dakota State at Colorado. Uh, first time North ever. First time ever they play. Yep. Maybe maybe future uh, in-conference rivals. I think North Dakota State warrants a Big 12 invite at this uh, point. It, uh, certainly uh, a Mountain West invite, invite is long overdue. Um, but uh, look, 11-4 and four North Dakota State, 4-8 and eight Colorado. Deion or Shadur Sanders, I should say, got a 99 in uh, college football playoff uh, EA sports game. Um, so did uh, who's the other guy? The, the Travis corner. Hunter. Travis Hunter. You know, so obviously EA sports thinks these guys are uh, cream of the crop players. Uh, Shadur put up huge numbers last year. Uh, you know, there's a little there, there, certainly uh, completely different cultures. <laughs> you know, North Dakota Hi, State. hired Warren Sapp, just hired Warren Sapp uh, as a GA. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Colorado, Colorado is now the epitome of flashy, you know, uh, win it, um, you know, gun for hire football. And North Dakota State is the epitome of pound your ass. Uh, that's kind of weird, but, uh, <laughs> just, uh, you know, cold weather football so it, two different styles coming at each other and i don't know who's going to win this game quite frankly i think it's going to be a great matchup and first I mean, off it's the bison versus the buffaloes I yeah mean, yeah true. i don't think most people know what the difference is between the two including myself there is a difference right? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah we, coach prime is must watch and uh the best fcs pr program over the last decade is north dakota state have they pulled a clemson and fallen off a little bit yes arguably uh, but still, very interesting matchup, and yeah, I'll be watching this one. And another uh, element that I'll add, and I love the matchup, but I think the reason why UNLV Houston's better, and I know Houston's breaking in a brand new head coach, and I I, I could sound like the devil, you know, uh, I could sound like I'm all over the place here with this, but because, but to me, when Matt Entz, the head coach of North Dakota State, goes and leaves for USC, the linebacking head coach, um, North Dakota State. Had Ent stayed, I think the game would have been a lot more interesting. But now you're breaking in a brand new head coach on the road at Colorado. Now the culture's there. It's a familiar guy. He, he was uh, with with uh, Craig Bull at Wyoming that they hired. But can you get it going week one is the question. Um, that's why I put UNLV Houston higher. Maybe fair. Tim Palasic. Is the guy's name hired uh, in December? I think it's Palasek, right? Palasek. Pa Palasek. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know a ton about the guy, but talk about a, a great, uh, you know, opening to the career. A game that'll certainly be on a lot of TVs. You want to uh, ingratiate yourself to the North Dakota State faithful? That would be a good way to do it. All right. I mean, look, I do love that matchup. Colorado's dumb enough to put this game on the fuck. This was clearly won before Dion, by the way. <laughs> and it's one of the things I'll give Dion the most credit for. In the future, I looked at their future schedules. It's easy. <laughs> he gets it. He put Georgia Tech on the schedule. Put he put a bunch of other like he, <laughs> like Colorado had scheduled aggressively for like thirty fucking years, like too aggressively. Yeah. To get your your mojo back, you have to schedule light. See, uh, see what the SEC. Uh, what, uh, um, see Bronco Mendenhall saying, coming out with it, and just saying, if I had, if I had it my way, I would schedule no one. You know, I would have yeah. the easiest schedule possible. Well, because the ranking systems favor that, in Rewards my opinion. That. Like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, but North Dakota State, Colorado is an awesome game. North Dakota State's got to go FBS at some point. I mean, it just it makes sense. Please. Um, Please. anyway, NC Nick. <laughs> 
Well, tough to go with any one game here, but uh, you know me, weekday Nick over here. Uh, Friday night slate is pretty awful. This game is there by itself. It pits two major conference opponents against ACC each other. Nick in the house. Both of these teams have had a lot of success on the football field. Some a little bit more recent than others. TCU at Stanford. I think it's a fun Friday night matchup. I mean, t- am, I, am I wrong here? You got, we, we, we're both love the Troy Taylor hire. It's year two Stanford in the ACC and TCU. Like I said, two years ago, they were the national championship game. You know, can they bounce back from a five and seven season? So uh, if you, if you're, Trying to say this game sucks, then you you would argue that TCU was five and seven, and Stanford was what uh, three, three and, and nine, nine last year. UNLV Houston's but, way better in this game. I don't think so. Yeah, and also, it would be a pretty easy argument. <laughs> well, it's also where and when, uh, especially when the game is being played, because if that UNLV game is say Saturday night going up against Georgia, Clemson, and Notre Dame A and M, and meanwhile we're all twilling our thumbs Friday night trying to watch a game. TCU Stanford, I, I'm intrigued by this game. Look, you I'm know, intrigued by, by the game. I'll give you a little bit of credit there, but the, like home atmosphere, shit. Um, <laughs> uh, I I, I got to put UNLV Houston much higher than TCU Stanford, in my opinion. Like, uh, okay, you got a team that played for the national championship. Um, uh, credit there. I kind of think. TCU has been headed in the wrong direction ever since they fired Patterson. I think Dykes capitalized off of. Uh, I remember when he had Scotty Wackenheim, the former uh, Eddie Robinson coach of the year in the FCS on, he said, Gary Patterson, he goes, Dykes won with Gary Patterson's players. He, he said, we'll see long term. He goes, the best coach I ever worked with. And he's worked with a lot of good coaches. Uh, he said, Gary Patterson. So I, I'm curious to see if TCU can actually be good. Under and you, say, you say ACC, Nick, my first matchup was not an ACC team. Meanwhile, I think you've been hanging out with the big 12 boys too much. Cause your first two games have big 12 opponents. And I passed on Colorado. I think the reality is the big 12 just got too many fucking teams. <laughs> um, but uh, no Stanford's in the ACC. That was my point is it's funny. And that, that they're now in the ACC. So <laughs> ACC, Nick. Gotcha. Uh, it is <laughs> yeah. No um, argument there. <laughs> I mean, it's still a decent game. Like I think it's, I mean, it's clearly the best <laughs> Friday night game. Um, Soon as, as soon as Stanford's in the ACC, they're they're a compelling uh, team. All yeah, of a sudden, Nick, Nick always said they're now, boring as fuck, and now, now they're doing the ACC and he's in. <laughs> now you know what? Now seriously though, if this game is at like 10 p.m. Eastern time because it's in California, this will be why reason number one why it sucks to have national conferences. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, especially just wait until Duke's playing on the play. farm, buddy. Exactly. Just wait till Duke's playing on the farm. At least they're holding um, basketball next year. Patty, see your thoughts on TCU Stanford. Well, let me tell you this. You know, uh, I may be TMZ, Pat, because I'm the first guy to pick Clemson versus Georgia at number four, and I'm catching flat for that, uh, even though you, you know, said that was passable. But Nick is time slot Nick. Uh, you know, <laughs> I said yeah. on weekday Nick. <laughs> yeah, weekday Friday Nick. Friday night. What are you talking about? Friday night, you can have a few cocktails. You're staying up on the farm watching the game. If that game uh, starts at 10, I ain't watching the whole thing. <laughs> oh, boy. You know. I agree that I'll be watching this game. There are a lot of other games on this slate that won't have my eyeballs on them, you know, or at least fully. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this does. And look, I, I'll be honest, like Troy Taylor, I, I do think that that team is going to get better. Um, and then are, are we going to watch uh, Stanford uh, or a TCU backslide? Who's the guy at uh, Miami back at Larry Coker, right? Yeah. He just took over for Butch uh, Butch Davis and then ran that thing into the ground over a few years. But he had a a, a national championship season there, uh, so I think maybe he uh, 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 Sonny Dykes is similar. I mean, Sonny Dykes' previous stops indicate that he is not a great coach. So I, I don't think that TCU is going to be great this year. But I think Stanford's a team on the rise, a little bit compelling, a little bit compelling, just to see where what Stanford is. It, and maybe TCU gets better again. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little compelling. All right. It goes back to me. And look, I know you want me to take the other weekday game, Nick, but I'm not doing it because in my opinion, it, it, what, it doesn't have any big 12 teams in it. <laughs> I am going to play another big 12 team. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> because, well, just because like if I had one game, so like if, if I picked UNLV Houston incorrectly there, it would not be to any of the games you guys mentioned. It would be to this one. 
South Dakota State has a crazy win streak going on. <laughs> they yeah. head to Stillwater, where Gundy always sucks in the first couple of weeks. They lo- they got worked by South Alabama last year, th- like thirty four seven. Still went to the Big Twelve Championship. They be- they lost to Central Michigan at home. They've barely gotten past Tulsa like three or four years in a like out of the past five years or six years. In early in the season, they have a knack for struggling in September. And oh, you put on a juggernaut who returns a shit ton of production, including star quarterback Mark Gronowski. Oh, South Dakota State's live in Stillwater, boys. And this could be a big time blemish on the Big 12. So, Big 12, Kobe. <laughs> I'm taking it from the Jackrabbits' point of view. I think they're live. I think they're live in Stillwater. Are they even going to be dogs? Uh, I don't I mean- know. I, I mean, I would assume yes, because Oklahoma state played in the big 12 championship, but this is a game guys. This is a fucking game. You oh, got- if anybody thinks it's not going to be a competitive game, then they just don't know college football. And they certainly don't know FCS football because San Diego state has been the best FCS team over the last three years or so. Yeah. What is the uh, big 12 doing with these? Uh, I, I crazy. Know, insane. Like- <laughs> <laughs> now, o- Oklahoma State may have gone to the Big 12 championship last year, but in the first three weeks of the season, they beat Central Arkansas by uh, 14. They beat a terrible Arizona State team by 12, and they lost to South Alabama by 26. Colby's right. This team is awful traditionally in the month of September, and you're facing a, a juggernaut in South Dakota State. I think yeah, they should be favorite. But- so South that, Dakota that State's crazy. won like 34 of 35 or something crazy yeah. like that. The, yeah. So the crazy win streak is 29 straight wins for, for South Dakota State. Their last loss was seven to three defeat to Iowa to start oh, that the game 2022 was, that was, season. Do, do, do you remember that game too? It was a field goal and two safeties yeah. for Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They yes. A touchdown. The old fashioned uh, seven. The All last right. time. South Dakota State played an FBS FBS team. They beat Colorado State in tw- in 2021 by a lot too. It was by double digits. Uh, so yeah, th- this is a very good game. I, I don't have any issue with where you played this one. I think no, I'm saying like if, if that's what I'm saying. That's the one that I could say could be better than UNLV Houston would be that because I actually like North Dakota State Colorado. I understand it. I like the Bison angle. Like they never played, but I also think North Dakota State breaking in a new coach it, it loses a little bit of its luster there, but. Um, South Dakota state, Oklahoma state, you're taking a team in the big 12 champion. This could be such a black eye for the big 12. This is what, what are they doing here? Like, <laughs> look, they need to, I know that that Colorado was in the pac 12, but whatever they need to have a meeting. Brett, your needs to get them on there and say, do what the big 12 basketball does. Yeah. Right. What are we doing here? By taking that, because all you can be is is laughed at for for scheduling an FCS and losing. Yeah, there's no win here. No one knows <laughs> that North. I mean, not, not many people know that North Dakota State and South Dakota State would like would, would dominate the MAC. Right. You know the I mean? like, the college football yeah. committee isn't looking at, at this as a good win. If they yes, win. yes, it, it should be though because it is a good win. And I'll even mm-hmm. add in BYU schedules Southern Illinois, who's like an FCS playoff team every fucking year, right? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe you're not crazy. quite to the same yeah. level, but still. Yeah, still let, crazy. Let, let me just throw this in again, and and uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, pat my Southern th- Illinois pat- beat Northern Illinois last year. Anyway, continue. Go, Petty. I'm gonna pat my team on the back a little bit, but I'm also gonna compliment the teams that have been better than them. James Madison, you know, was a very good FCS team, but South Dakota State and North Dakota State have been better over the last 10, 15 years, specifically North Dakota state, but obviously South Dakota state over the last few years, we came in and kicked the Sun Belt's ass over the last two years. I, I honestly think if you put so- this South Dakota state team in the big 12 this year, they would be a top four team, you know? So yeah. this has, yeah. you know, a, a championship level. Can, uh, it could really screw up uh, Oklahoma state season. If they have a, <laughs> a good season, it, uh, ahead it of really them. could like, unless they get the auto bid because like, there's a good chance they probably end up in the in the in the Big Twelve Championship because Gundy so, seems to like catch magic in October, right? But yeah. you got to be terrified if you're a Cowboy fan here. Anyway, uh, love that matchup, love it on the schedule. Um, now we bounce to Patty C. All right, let's take a look what we got on the slate here. I think uh, now we see our first big drop off. Are, are you, do we agree on that? 
No, I think there's some. I, I like. I'll be honest. I mean, you still have Carolina and Minnesota, right? Doesn't do much for me. I mean, but t- you can't tell me there's a big drop off with that in TCU and Stanford. Thursday sure. night, Patty C. Yeah. Week okay. Day. You know, I got a different game, but I think that most uh, people listening will probably consider this a drop off. I consider it a more compelling game, um, but I'm going to go with Coastal Carolina at Jacksonville State. Hmm. Whoa, he's going to page two. All right. All Getting right. on that. There All we right, go. Patty C. It's because Rich Rod. Patty C. It is because Rich Rod. Rod. <laughs> You know, and I think maybe there's some residual uh, Jamie Chadwell love at Coastal Carolina, even though he hasn't been there. And this will be year two that he's not there. But still, Coastal Carolina was a decent team last year. And I'm curious to see if Rich Ryan can continue this climb at Jacksonville State and turn them into a contender. Well, of course, Pat, uh, you know, it would be Patty C to uh, mention the cock fest going on. Uh, <laughs> <That> <laughs> always down rip. for a good <laughs> cock fest. <laughs> so the, the shot that clears against the game cocks, little cock fest going on in Jacksonville. Always has Alabama. my attention. <laughs> Coastal beat them by 14 last year. NC Nick, uh, do you feel like this game is better than your, your, than your ACC matchups that we have there that he passed on? I will say that this is my favorite G5 versus G5 game, but he's playing it about five games, three to five games too soon. It's in, it's, it's in my top 15 when it's not in my top 10. North Carolina, Minnesota does not. I don't give a fuck if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? <laughs> this is a shit. I mean, the fact that it's in Minnesota makes it a little more compelling. Otherwise, well, North Carolina. Well, I'm up next, and that's not the game I'm going to play just yet. Woo, okay, okay. Okay. Well, either way, but, but, uh, I think – go ahead. No, I love this Coastal Carolina-Jacksonville State game. I, it's a fun I game. Do, it is. It, it is a very fun game. I'm intrigued by it. I would like for them to put this on Thursday or Friday or Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday night. It'd be or a perfect Sunday Wednesday or Monday. Anytime except Saturday. But right. they're going to put it on Saturday because they don't understand the fucking sport. Um Coastal Carolina, eight and five, Jacksonville State, nine and four. I mean, they're good teams, uh, both probably in uh, competition for their uh, Conference USA for Jacksonville State, Sunbelt for, I mean, hey, you get the Sunbelt CUSA showdown. Um, so th- there's a little compelling angle there. Uh, what do you think, Tim Beck? Has he maintained the offense of like uh, wizardry that uh, uh, I don't know. This, is, this is the year we learn. Yeah, like because Grayson McCall is at NC State now. He chased. He, he didn't piss teal. He went to the pussy pack, All right? <laughs> and now I do think we learned. We saw this with Sonny Dykes. We were just talking about Sonny Dykes after Patterson's players for the most part all left, went to the NFL. They went five and seven in year two. Does Tim Beck become the coach yeah. we have known him to be? <laughs> NC Nick. I mean, any anything else you want to say on Coastal Carolina at Jacksonville I mean, State? Look, Coastal's won 28 games over the last three years, and Jack, Jacksonville State first year in the FBS, they win nine games. So uh, I, I do like the matchup. I like it a lot, but it would have been so much better if it was say you know Wednesday night or something. Yeah, I'm agreeing. I'm agreeing. NC Nick is on the clock. Where are you going? I almost went to Thursday night, but I'm gonna do one instead. I'm gonna do Fresno at Michigan. Oh, I yeah. I, I think Fresno's game. live. I, I think mean, they're live. Life after Harbaugh, my Sharona Moore better watch out <laughs> because Fresno is a decent team, man. And th- this is, I would say this is Michigan's hardest non-con game since 2021. Yeah. Last uh, they, year was yeah, a cakewalk. Yeah. And the year before that was too. Uh, last year, Fresno won at Purdue and at Arizona state two P four teams. I like, granted nowhere near on the level of Michigan, but uh, look, I mean, we know Fresno is a good team. They're a solid football team. It's going to be interesting to watch. Michigan with the new coach, a new quarterback, new running backs, you name it. Well, you know? and I think Fresno will be better this year than they were last year, breaking in yeah. Mikey Keene, breaking in a bunch of other young players that they, you know, they had reloaded. Last year was kind of a reloading year for them. And they were uh, rolling last year before Keene got hurt. And then they it, picked up a couple losses. Yeah. And and obviously Tedford missed the bowl game with health issues. But Michigan, not only are you you losing Jim Harbaugh, um, you're losing a bunch of the coaching staff. And then they went out and hired a new DC. He's implementing the new defense, and then he gets a DUI. He gets fired. So now you're working <laughs> with the second defensive coordinator. Did he and- know what state he was in when he got the DUI? <laughs> <laughs> and and then you add in the fact of who they lost. You're, they're replacing 
a ton of people. I think Fresno. I, I'm fascinated by this game. I think Fresno could pull an app state. Fresno is always fearless as fuck. You know what I mean? For like sure. you come in there, they're not going to play to tie. They're going to play. They're going to play their game, whether they lose or not. You know what I mean? Like that, that to me, like there's programs that, that play scared. You know what I mean? App state and Fresno state and, and, and Southern miss and shit. They put all their car. They, they go all in. And and that's, what's dangerous about schedule in those teams is Fresno's going to the a, they have a track record of fucking with big time programs. So yeah. you can catch Michigan reloading and Texas is on deck. I don't even think Michigan's looking at Fresno state. They're looking at Texas week two. That's true. A huge look at spot. I mean, you're right. Fresno has that same app state mojo, but they're a bigger program, you know, or they have. Yeah, I'm just saying they, they've notoriously fucked over teams. Shit, the year Colorado should have played for the national championship in 2001. Fresno USC State and Reggie Bush barely yeah, got, yeah, barely got out of that they, game. They're yeah. they're a fucking huge pain in the ass. Whoever they're playing, like they're gonna go all in. They're gonna go all in. I think they beat Cincy at Cincy one year. Um, I mean they went two and zero oh against the uh, uh, Power Four last year, beating Purdue and Arizona State both on the road. They beat um, UCLA, I think, the year before with Chip Kelly. Like they they. they Beat Boise, the Mountain West champs. What they started eight and one uh, with their only loss on a tough road trip to Wyoming. Why did they lose their last? Mike games? Keen got injured. They're starting quarterback. Okay, so yeah. they really fell apart in and his Tedford, absence. Tedford had another heart problem. Was that he, for all all of the month of November? Essentially, no. I think he missed like the final game or maybe the final two. Okay, so it either was, way, I think it was just the final game. They yeah. were greatly affected uh, by that. But the week one, you would expect hopefully health. From the quarterback and Tedford, obviously a, a wizard. Um, you know, maybe the new defensive coordinator has his hands full with Fresno. Either way, I could see this being a very, very interesting game. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I, I love this game actually. First time they've ever played, by the way. They've never played before. So watch out, big house. Watch out, big house. We've seen you lose minus Jim Harbaugh. We've seen you lose to App State. We've seen you lose to Toledo. Can we add Fresno State to that list? Um, my final pick, not my final pick, but my final pick of this segment, which because we're we're gonna shift over to side two in a second here. I'm gonna go to North Carolina at Minnesota. I don't want to. I don't want to. Like like I said, Carolina Minnesota. I think is on the same level as TCU Stanford. And to me, uh, Carolina beat the piss out of Minnesota last year, Minnesota. I thought we went, we went through the bit, the big 10 schedules and I thought they have the hardest schedule in the whole big 10. So I am not optimistic on Minnesota's hopes this year. I mean, PJ flex seems to work better when there's low expectations. I'll give them that. But North Carolina also is a team that lost everybody. So it's, it's a stand. It's a Thursday night standalone. I mean, there's FCS games and, 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 there's I'm a sure. lot of shit Thursday night. Yeah. This is the only game that stands out. I actually think the, the the second best game is on after this game, which would be Sacramento State and San Jose State. Um I I think this is still compelling to me. Like this is still cause because Mac Brown without he's had Sam Howell and Drake May for so long. Now he bring in, brings in Max Lawn Chair Johnson, son of Brad. And North Carolina native. Minnesota brings in Max Brosmer from the FCS. It's just a kind of a cool game. I don't know what, like, I don't think Minnesota's a player at all in the Big Ten. So, can they knock off Carolina, who could end up being a player in the ACC? Because Carolina's always, you know, I feel like, distance. yes, yes. So, it is, it's, it's interesting in that regard. Um, NC Nick, your thoughts on Carolina, Minnesota? Well, yeah, it definitely you know, deserves to be played here. Uh, but no, especially in the in the new look Big Ten, where there's no longer a West for Minnesota to hide in, uh, they they're not a player. I'd I'd argue that UNC probably isn't a player in the ACC either. Um, but I mean, but for I, shit talking rights, ago, for shit talking I, rights, ACC Big Ten, it's a big game. Uh, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, I, but I mean, look, two years ago, UNC was in the ACC championship. So I guess they were a player. It just seems to me like they're never, you know, Clemson or Florida State. Or they're always a notch below that. And and really, I mean, they always kind of come up a little bit short. Uh, maybe that's just me hating UNC. But uh, no, the game definitely belongs here. Um, well played. 
Now uh, the ACC could have a big opening week. If you get Miami to beat Florida at Florida, Notre Dame to beat I know Notre Dame's fringe ACC to beat A and M, Carolina to beat Minnesota and Clemson, Georgia, you have opportunity. Even Stanford, TCU, you got opportunity. I'd say the only one that I really would would Clemson, Georgia would be the surprise. The other ones could actually happen. I um, mean Notre Dame beating Texas A and M that doesn't do anything for the ACC. I don't think it really. helps their strength of schedule because they play fucking seven or eight. Teams, yeah. you know, so well, I mean, was Florida it's State's strength of schedule a problem last year? Yeah, it's all bullshit. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Uh, it helps right. perception just a, a hair. But I don't, I do. Do you think there's any real connection between the ACC uh, football and Notre Dame football in people's minds? Well, I would say it helps your strength of schedule for whatever bullshit metric, yeah, you could say. But for, you don't, but you don't state. say Notre Dame. You know, is an ACC team. Therefore, Notre Dame's good, so therefore ACC football is good. You don't. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh. All right, folks. I want to tell you that the college football experience is brought to you by AVO. Yes, we're proud to partner with AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically, betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. The AVO tool scans the sports books, looking for discrepancies in in odds, essentially, in, in all the odds. Uh, and then they tell you how much money you need to place at each sports book to expect a profit. The tool is super easy to use. It's lightning fast, as obviously arbitrage sports betting needs to be lightning fast. Uh, and the best part is AVO is completely free to use without restrictions. That's right. Completely free. Get started today at arbs versus odds.com. That's arbs versus odds.com. That's a R B S versus odds.com. Patty C you're on the clock. You know, let, let, let me go back to that ad real quick. I think uh, regarding arbitrage, uh, this is the time of year to catch it. You know, when these opening lines come out months in advance and you're everyone's hyped on last year. And I think Vegas is trying to get like, uh, you know, you to bite this early and, and, and take action. Uh, they're going to throw, I, I, of course the, 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 the line that jumps out at me is when Virginia tech had beaten Ohio state the year before and Ohio state won the national championship that year. Everyone forgot that Virginia tech beat Ohio state. And they put that line at 21 points in Blacksburg. I thought it was yeah, ridiculous. But that closed in, in, in 21 points in Blacksburg in uh in in March or, or May or something. And yeah, it dropped to like 10. It was like, yeah, if yeah. you do arbitrage, there's no chance you fucking lose that. Lo and behold, the 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 actual result was somewhere in between. You could have bet both sides of that and won a shit ton of money. So hell yeah, hell yeah. Get over to uh, AVO. <laughs> yes, let's go. You're on the clock, buddy, though. Um All right. And I think uh, side two, we got to go a little more rapid fire, right? Yeah, a little more rapid fire here. All right. So taking a look on this list, I don't see a ton that really. Uh, yeah, uh, let me go. Uh, let me go west with you here. We're going Wyoming at Arizona State. I know Arizona State has sucked, but uh, Kenny Dillingham year two. I, maybe I, I thought he looked good. At, I, I I thought as the season went on. They were more impressive than I figured them to be. That I mean, makes three sense. and nine. <laughs> but no, I, I thought they were going to be. I honestly thought they could go one and eleven. Or you know, I really thought that was a chance because the, yeah. like the cupboard was that empty. Yeah. And they were much more competitive in a few of those games than I thought they would be. True, true. Um, and so Arizona State always a, a turnkey program, at least to like a nine or ten win level. Um, and Wyoming has been built up here. Bowl is gone. It's not that long of a trip. Um, I think Wyoming going down to Arizona state's a fun game. I do too. And I, I don't think Wyoming's going to miss a beat. I think, uh, you know, they hired their offensive coordinator. Uh, I'm sorry. They hired their defense coordinator, I believe. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot more of the same. So that makes this game. A, Wyoming's to me, a, a, a good P five. It's in Tempe, so I'm, I'm sure uh, you know it'll be a little bit harder to 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 win. Wyoming's such a at such a great home field advantage there, but I think this is a 50 50 game. Arizona State's trying to build it. Jaden Rashada, they started a couple games. You know, he's the highly touted freshman a year ago, and I think he's still a freshman because he didn't start enough games. Uh, it, it's it's a good game. NC Nick, I agree. No, uh, yeah, it's it, it's interesting. I mean, uh, Jay Saw Yell, I believe, is his, his name, the new coach for Wyoming, and uh, it's a big. You know, Dillingham needs to get started season or year two 
on the right foot. So it's, they can't lose at home to Wyoming. If it was in Laradice, I'd say obviously <laughs> Wyoming is always a live dog at home. On the road, not quite as much, but uh, I expect this to be a competitive game. So yeah, good game. Yeah, I I, I do think once again I would love it. On like, I mean, actually, because you know, one thing I noticed last year and and maybe even the year before is they don't play many late night West Coast games on yeah. Saturday, which suck. So give us this one at least. Give Would you call this uh, West Coast uniform porn a little bit? Yes, both u- uniforms, especially if the sun if they use the Sun Devil that we're using on YouTube.com. Like yeah. you know, they, they I don't know why they ever strayed from that. That is a beautiful yeah. old school uniform that they have. Um, yeah, I, I think that's compelling. I think that's compelling. Um, NC Nick. You know, let's go back to a home Big Ten school in uh, in the state of Michigan playing a G5 opponent, FAU at Michigan State. Um, I'm expecting a good year for FAU. Uh, we go back to our um, our AAC uh, preview. I had them in the ACC, the AAC championship game. And it's all about the new coach here at you know Johnson Johnson Smith at Michigan State. Aiden Childs, I imagine, is going to be the starter. He's very exciting. Uh, I think this game could also be a close one too, just because it is game one for a, a first year head coach at Michigan State, and and they've been struggling the last couple of years. So uh, I think this game is interesting. Yeah, Michigan State's played Florida Atlantic a lot over the past like fifteen years. I want to say like they're three and zero against them, but it, it, we'll see where Damian Martinez goes too. But I do think you're right. I think FAU could be live for an upset. Not, I mean, I love the Jonathan Smith hire. I think he's a great coach. I just, it's game one. And to me with game one, FAU has better continuity right now than, than Michigan state. So in that regard, I think FAU could be live here. Patty, see your thoughts on the owls coming into East Lansing and knocking off Sparty. Well, I think uh, Florida Atlantic four and eight last year. I think uh, that's, Maybe thinking they're a little better than they are. I, they, I no, but they, they, they would have been better. Casey Thompson, their starting quarterback, broke his collarbone and almost out. almost won at Illinois last year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they would have they would have been a bowl team had had their quarterback stayed healthy. They, they have traditionally have- been one of the more talented teams in this, uh, Conference USA, if not the most talented. And you're right, Michigan State uh, a little bit vulnerable at this point with the brand new coach. Still, Jonathan Smith. But what did he do? Did he? It took him a couple of years to turn around. Uh, but you got to understand, Oregon the State. program was left in much worse shape at Oregon State after Gary Anderson than Tucker had it in a little bit better shape. As That's kind of my point. State. I think yeah. that uh, I expect Michigan State to kind of you know body Florida Atlantic. But if Florida Atlantic has some talent that Michigan State's not ready for, maybe this could be a closer game than uh, than I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, we will get. To actually, hold on, guys. We're going to the island. Guess what? UCLA has had the worst offseason. Oh, their head coach, th- their head coach left to be an offensive coordinator, like a head coach that had been a head coach in the NFL, two different franchises, <laughs> took Oregon to the national championship. All right. Timmy Chang, I thought showed great progress in year two. They would, I know five and eight, still five and eight, but UCLA's going to the Island. The series dates back to 1935. UCLA's never lost to Hawaii. And now you catch them where they lose Dante Moore transfers to Oregon. Their Carson Steele goes pro. You, they, they were, they, they, they've lost every, the cupboards empty and they didn't have any money. And they brought in Deshaun Foster, a running backs coach to, to, to be the head coach. Let me tell you. It's not going to get any easier than this, Hawaii. This is your shot to take down a Big Ten school on the island. I know you took down Alabama on the island back in the June Jones era. Here's your shot. Here's your shot at a Big Ten school. Oh, I think they could. I think it's going to be a game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's a game on the island. I think Timmy Chang in year three will have this program more ready. I think, like, w- regardless of this game, I think Hawaii is a bowl team this year and UCLA. I got no idea what the fuck to expect out of UCLA. It seems like everything's going against them right now. So I think Hawaii could be live to knock off the Bruins on the Island. Call on me the crazy. Island. No, yeah. I, you're not crazy. This is a great play. We, this probably could have been played several spots higher. And of course I love me some Hawaii. So I'm all about it. 
Uh, but uh, honestly, just regardless of uh, whether I like it or not, the, the, there's an upset that, that could happen here. NC Nick? I certainly will agree with you guys. Uh, also not mentioned that Hawaii does play week zero. So this is their second game. They get a game against uh, who was it? Delaware, Delaware State. State. The Hornets. So get, you know, Your shake, Hornets. Off, shake off the rust a little bit. No, I think this is one of the matchups where you see a G4. I'm sorry, a P4 at a G5 where all, automatically you say, you know, this has upset potential. So, uh, yeah, so, sure. Why not? So let me ask you, out of the Mountain West teams we played, we got Wyoming at Arizona State, Fresno at Michigan, UNLV at Houston, UCLA at Hawaii. Could they go two and two in that stretch? What are they going to do? Sure. I think they could go two and two. Hold on. It was, it was Wyoming, Arizona, Arizona State, UNLV, Houston, UCLA, Fresno, Michigan, oh, okay. UCLA, yeah. UCLA, Hawaii. Yeah, two and two is possible. I'd probably say they're one and three. If I'm, yeah. but, but two and two is certainly possible. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I think so, they, I think they get one. They get one at least. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch folks. If you're on YouTube, stay put. If you're on the audio side of things, make make sure you ch check out the B side where we draft the rest of these games on the college football experience where you better start thinking about yours. All right. We are back on the college football experience. We're on the B side, breaking down college football in April. What's not to like, uh, that's what we do on the college football experience. And we are currently on Patty C's pick. Uh, we drafted the first week zero and uh, you know, the, the first slate of games. Uh, so go listen to that as we're drafting all top 30 games for week one. Patty C where are you going here? Well, I think uh, you guys know there's bound to be a personal element to this at some point. Uh, <laughs> They're losing. But, They're losing if you played. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Colby claims that he, he he believes Biff Pogey is the next coming of fucking. Uh, I don't know. Who who, who is Biff Pogey? Biff who, who could he be? He's the next. He's the next coming, he's the of, next Biff coming of Biff Tannen. There you go. He's gonna he's well, gonna fucking he's stuff you in a locker. The shit. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Bob Chesney is not the type to get bullied. Okay. He uh, is apparently got a new energy going at JMU, which is even better than what had been there previously. So uh, 11 and two last year, we are all expecting a drop off. I don't know if that's going to happen and going to a three and nine Charlotte team. Colby thinks they'll be vastly improved. I think JMU is going to win this game and capture the nation's Charlotte's attention. winning this game. They're and winning JMU, this game. JMU is going to throttle Charlotte and position themselves immediately for the group of five's uh, berth in the college football playoff. NC Nick. I mean, the one extra fun thing about this game is that we've talked about this matchup somehow, I think, every week for the past like three or four <laughs> weeks. So, I'm telling uh, you, Charlotte's winning this. Place your money line wagers now. JMU is going to be favorite. <laughs> they're they're in the the first coat. I mean, look, game one for Bob Chesney at, at JMU. Fifth Pope's Pope, got the advantage. They're at home. He's packing that crowd. That's Let's what go. that was my question is how's the crowd going to be? They were I, better I, I, last year. Yes, Pogey's brought in he's brought in that money. Because before Pogey arrived, uh, help me out here. Who was the coach before him? It was You're, uh Healy, right? Yeah, you kind of yeah, missed Healy. on on Healy. You, you thought did. he was <laughs> but I did. But, but they did beat Duke. They did true, but that <laughs> the stadium was was empty, man. I mean, so you know, maybe this is the right guy to really get that you know excitement. Co Co Cody knows. Cody going. says he, he's getting this dub. Good. Let's go. Uh, I tend to side with Patty C. I think JMU wins, but I do expect a, a good game. You're wrong, buddy. You guys are uh, flat out wrong. Let me tell you what. Where the great crowds happen in the state of North Carolina are not in the big city. They're out in the country, whether that be Greenville, whether that be Boone. Okay. How about, how about Raleigh, the capital buddy? <laughs> I mean, I guess by default with that many people there, they still don't fucking win many games in Raleigh. Uh, <laughs> and North Carolina is a perennial disappointment. Like we already talked about. Damn, you going to fuck Charlotte up by 28. Mark it down. Place oh a bet God. right now. I can't wait. That, Nick, that's honestly, if I had to rank this way, like games I want I want to see, that's high up there. That's well, really well, fucking high up just there. Just because of, of, you know, Patty C. Yeah. Like and JMU and Colby Well, and Biff, Biff Pogey is, is America's, to me, he's like the greatest guy in America. <laughs> Everyone loves DJ Burns. I'm like, no, fuck it. Biff Pogey was ahead of DJ Burns. All right. Um, all right, uh, I love. I said I didn't say last week. It's fun to root for fat people, so it, it applies. <laughs> there you go. And, and look, Jamie, Jamie is two and zero all time against Charlotte. They beat Charlotte uh, when Charlotte just first came to the FBS. 
uh, in Charlotte by eight, but that wasn't, that was pre Pogey. All right. A lot of shit was different. Could, could there be two more different coaches? Big fat cutoff sleeves, cursing <laughs> uh, Biff Pogey and Bob Chesney with his like perfectly quaffed hair coming from like <laughs> exclusively Catholic universities. Uh, I like, I like the contrast there. I do too. NC Nick, you're on the clock. I mean, there's there's one P4 versus P4 game left, but it's hard to take that game knowing <laughs> knowing that they you know the ACC and college football totally fucked up the Labor Day game. What the hell, man? I mean, oh come my on, God. give me a break. This is ridiculous. So no, actually, I'm there's not... two. There's two. There's another ACC game against a P5 or P4. Is there? There is in Nashville. Uh, I must have missed that one. Uh, probably because that game sucks too. Anyway, I'm going to go with another Sunbelt game. Back to back Sunbelt games. Old Dominion at South Carolina. Woo-hoo-hoo! I like it. I was looking at that one too. Ricky, Ronnie, and the Monarchs, they proved us very wrong last year. I think we were on the under. I think it was at like three and a half, I want to say. Uh, yeah. They went 66. They, they pissed in our face. That's right. Uh, and look, they've, they've played. P four teams tight. That's there's the two Virginia tech wins last year. The wake forest game was very close. And meanwhile, South Carolina has been known to struggle with G five opponents. Uh, last year, Jacksonville state game, 10 point game. Uh, there was an ECU win a couple years ago. There was a, a five point win over app a couple years ago. So, uh, you know, does, does ODU come, come in there and win? Probably not, but it could be closer than expected. Hey, I mean, look, I, I think there's some better ones out there, but it's not that far off. All right. I like it. I hope the Monarchs can knock down the Gamecocks. Um, Patty, see your thoughts on ODU, South Carolina. Well, ODU has certainly had uh, uh, Shane Beamer's alum uh, in check, beating Virginia Tech a couple times over the past few years. Will they get Shane Beamer here? Five and seven, a huge year for Beamer. I think they've gotten that Don Staley championship taste in their mouth. They probably expect the same from their football program. ODU could come into town and fuck up the season right off the bat for uh, South Carolina. I, I like love it. the I love the Virginia and Carolina flavor. The last two games we picked. Now, now you guys are talking my language. There you go. <laughs> Oh, so I work with Ryan Real Money Kramer, who's a Virginia Tech grad. Please tell he me thinks, you're not playing this game. He thinks they can go eleven and one or twelve and zero. <laughs> I got news for you, folks. Um, and Patty C sprinkles this Virginia Tech bullshit, talking about how they whooped Tulane's ass and Tulane had thirty players sit out, <laughs> and Willie Fritz was at Houston, right? I got news for you. Do you? You know, Virginia Tech's coming in. Everyone thinks they're going to be, you know, Kyron Drones, Heisman talk. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> I'm That's serious. I've heard. No, I've heard that. Um, <laughs> you know what's going to happen? The construction zone is going to be a little bit less construction zony. All right. <laughs> and. They got Diego pissing Pavia at starting quarterback. Oh, that's they right. also have <laughs> Jerry kill on the staff. Yeah. Vanderbilt is going to beat Virginia tech week one. Wow. Write it. All right. Write it. Va- Virginia tech at Vanderbilt. This is going to be fucking hilarious. And the ACC is going to lose a critical game against the sec. Cause Vandy is beating Virginia tech in Nashville at the construction site. Again, it's not the ACC losing a game if this happens. It's Virginia Tech. Well, I know. But <laughs> this everyone, conference everyone stuff is getting out of, out of hand. Shit. Everyone always does. I love how you're backing away from this now that you got Stanford and Cal in your league. You're like, oh, yeah, what? Yeah. what are you talking about? We're, we're stronger than ever. <laughs> you're, you're like an SEC fan, Nick. When, when, when the ACC is winning, it's ACC, yeah. ACC. And then, oh, it's just an individual performance when they lose. Guys, <laughs> Vanderbilt's going to beat them. I feel pretty decent about this as an I'll upset. Say, I'll say that all I'll say, I'm, I won't go that far. I'll just say when, when Virginia tech has, you know, high expectations is when you don't want to ride the Hokies. Um, all I can say is Vanderbilt was super young last year. They're going to be, and then you add in like 10 New Mexico state transfers who all were part of a 10 win season at New Mexico state. I'm telling you, pissing Pavia. Everyone's talking Kyron drones. 
No. I know Vanderbilt was two and ten. Is last everyone year. talking Kyron Jones or is it honestly just Virginia, Virginia no, Tech? No, 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 no. Fucking Brad Powers uh, mentioned that uh, you know take a future on him to win the Heisman. God, please. Virginia Tech is getting better, but it comes crashing down in Nashville. Bring your hard hats. This is gonna happen. I can't. I'm actually excited by this game. It's the first time I'm, I've been excited about a Vandy season opener <laughs> in a long fucking time. Um, Virginia Tech is going to slap Vanderbilt. Uh, it, it, it it may end up being like a 14 point game, but what? I still think no, dude. Virginia Tech at the end of the year destroyed at UVA, and they weren't sitting everyone. <laughs> they Virginia he, wanted he to UVA win. That still game. got Herman Moore, right? <laughs> he's he's <laughs> touting that as a great win. I think okay. UVA <laughs> had a o- okay season last year. I mean, they were what three and nine, but so they're not a terrible ass team. And Virginia Tech beat them what 55 14. Virginia Tech was a good team at the end of last year, and Brent Pry has been building. This Fade thing. Jerry Kill at your own cost. He beat Auburn at Auburn last year. New Mexico State beat Auburn at Auburn. All right, Vanderbilt might be a different story. Although New Mexico State was a different story before Jen- Jerry Kill got there, so we'll see. Maybe you're right. Maybe pissing you're right. Pavia is gonna piss all over these Hokies fans' <laughs> dreams. All right. Um, all right. Uh, okay. Well. Patty's oh, here on the clock. Okay. Um, I guess we're going to go to the great state of Texas. Uh, where the Colorado State Rams, give me that music, Ram it, uh, are gonna be playing the Longhorns, you know, two phenomenal uniforms here. But look, Texas uh was tied in the fourth quarter with Wyoming last year. I think Colorado State is a team on the rise. So uh maybe Colorado State. Catches Texas looking forward to Michigan. I like it. Jay Norvell. Uh, my only thing is this is a big year for him. Uh, Fowler Nicosi's back. Their, their freshman quarterback from a year ago. <sighs> can they get this done against Texas? I don't think so, but can it be a good game? Maybe. NC Nick, your, your thoughts on Colorado State, Texas? I mean, it certainly has blow up potential, but I mean, I am a big Jay Norvell fan. Year one, three and nine. Year two, five and seven. So just keep on heading in the right direction. Uh, it's a it's a big test to see if they can even keep it close. But it's also a test for Texas to see if they're still you know top five, top ten team. Uh, my concern is that the game might get out of hand, but it'll be interesting. To kind of maybe maybe score monitor, then if it's if it's closer than expect, hop on over to it. But uh, it's a solid game. All right, NC Nick. All right, uh, I could take you to a couple ones. Uh, let's go, Boise at Georgia Southern. I thought this game was better than ODU South Carolina because these are like how many FCS national championships are on the or you know. Yeah. I guess Boise didn't win FCS national championships, but they were really good in the FCS. And then they, they pretty much won national championships going undefeated and, and our shitty system, not letting them play. Right. Um, I mean, Boise plays anybody anywhere, including a kind of a strange matchup, you know, <laughs> first uh, ever meeting. Yeah. First ever meeting. Yeah. Make a ton of sense, but uh, I love mountain West football and Sunbelt football and they need to play each other more. I think, I think we mentioned this Colby, they should do a week. Where it's like a the, like the ACC Big Ten challenge in basketball used to. They be, really you know? should. They really Sun should. Sun Mountain West. Let's go. We went to Appalachian State, Wyoming last year. It was awesome. I know Nevada's at Troy this year, so maybe we're getting a little bit of it. And Boise, Georgia Southern. So not just yeah. this year. This week. Yeah. Yeah. They should. Yeah. You're right. Um. Uh. I love this game. I almost played this game with my last pick, but I saw that pissing Pavia was still out there, but <laughs> this is a great game. I think boys are going to fuck them up personally. Um, but I don't know. Georgia Southern clay Helton is on the hot seat and he always starts the season incredibly hot. <laughs> and then like they turn into complete shit by like mid October, <laughs> but they always look really good out the gate. So maybe Georgia Southern knocks off Boise here and probably some humid ass hot ass weather down there That's in Statesboro. True. They got well, clay working the fucking it. first down change. You know, he gives him a little, he gives him a little bump. You couple know, extra inches. Yeah. Uh, Patty C could use a couple extra inches. Also. <laughs> Couldn't we all? Couldn't we all? Uh, what do you make of this game? Patty C. Uh, I like it. I think it's a, a good game. Boise state. This is uh typical of their anyone, anywhere, anytime uh, mantra. And uh, I guess Statesboro 
you know, six and seven last year, Georgia Southern, not exactly uh, a hornet's nest, but uh, often a tough place to play. I think uh, it's going to be a tough game for Boise State, even though they're Mountain uh, West champions. Spencer Danielson, first year coach, right? The, who fires their coach after winning the conference championship? <laughs> Boise State does after eight and well, six. No, they not... fired him before that game. That's before. True. No. Yeah, oh, okay. they fired him like November 5th or something, but fair enough. Um, uh, yeah. Even still, yeah, it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty good game. We'll see if Clay Helton can uh, make this tough on Boise State. Guys, I got news for you. It's the Big Ten that's going to get their ass whooped week one because LSU is going to beat USC. North Carolina is going to beat Minnesota. And, you know, these two teams played, or, and Hawaii is going to beat UCLA. <laughs> These two teams played just two years ago and Miami, Ohio won. And guess what? They lead the all time series by, I think, four games. Miami, Ohio, Northwestern have been playing ball for a long <laughs> fucking time. All right. Brett Gabbert is back for his 75th year of college football. They've been playing this game since 1955. Uh, it, 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 November tenth, nineteen fifty-five. If you read the uh, if you read the uh, greatest sports almanac that that Biff Tannen and Griff Tannen had uh, promoted, I know they covered a USC uh, UCLA game in there. On the next page was Miami Ohio and Northwestern. Um, Miami Ohio is going into and get this. They don't even have Ryan Field. They're going to be playing this at like a practice facility. Like <laughs> Miami, Ohio is going to beat them. There's there's going to be no fans there. These private school pussies that all take the flying squirrel to the face. All right, they're going to get their ass whooped by the MAC champions, the Miami, Ohio Red Hawks. Get it done in Evanston. Fuck you, Big Ten. Let's go, Patty C. Your Northwestern thought? was a shocking eight and five last year. Uh, under the new coach, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, David Braun. David Braun. Um, Miami, Ohio. However, eleven and three. This is actually a better game than we're we're giving it credit for. Putting it down at number twenty one. Uh, could Miami, Ohio, possibly be uh, a uh, a MAC contender again? They probably would have been see. better than eleven and three had Gabbert not gotten injured. Yeah, I mean, of course I, he I, always gets injured, but he true. should be healthy for this game. <laughs> Fair. Uh, I'm telling you, Big Ten's going to have a horrible first week. Florida Atlantic could beat Michigan State. Fresno's going to beat the Big Ten's going to go win this. Penn State's going to lose to West Virginia. It's going to be fantastic, folks. Uh, uh, I will say that be careful because Colby tried to talk us into Miami of Ohio covering or potentially beating Miami, Florida week well, one it's a little last different. year. It's a little different. And like I said, you don't got to look that far and see caliber Nick. of athlete is different. True. Seven, two years ago, Miami, Ohio right. went into the Ryan field won 17 to 14. They're beating this wildcat pussy bunch. No, I agree. I mean, I, I mean, we, we talked about this in the Mac preview that this game, it, it does, you know, upset alert. It, it's possible. Very possible. Yeah. Uh, it's a fun one. It's a fun one. All right. Um, <laughs> Actually, before we get to Patty C's pick, I want to tell you that the uh, college football experience is brought to you by underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite player will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night. Pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry. Uh, so what are you doing folks? Sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN. To get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special, visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with that promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 as well as an instant pickup special. All right, we are back on the college football experience. Patty C is on the clock. What are you doing here, buddy? You, you still know, have I'm, a P5, a P4 against a P4, by the way, on, on Labor Day. Uh, and, uh, Patty C's got to be the one to play this because he he wished this into fruition. Wait, where is where is this game? I'm I'm missing it right uh, now. Here, if you're looking at the screen, bottom left hand corner right now. It's on campus. Uh, uh oh. I don't care about that game at all. <laughs> You're okay. the one that wanted O'Brien back in Chestnut Hill. That's true. I, I didn't wish this game into fruition, but I did wish Brian O'Brien back there. Look, and you're, you're you're probably right about that. That what uh, uh, a Boston College team with an Irishman as an, uh, a coach does is go seven and six and pull big upsets. <laughs> and this would be a big upset, but that's not the game I'm playing here. Um, 
Although that may, that probably should be uh, 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 scrolling up this list. I'm tempted. I am tempted. Maybe it's recency bias. I'm going to go recency bias. This is a stupid play and laugh at me for all you want. UConn at Maryland. No, you, I think this is live. I think this is live. I don't. I think Maryland's going to slap UConn, but uh, I know that UConn is, uh, you know, it could be a huge win for a potential ACC team in UConn over Maryland. If UConn wants to position itself as an ACC player and get that money, which I'm sure they're thinking about right now after winning two straight basketball national championships, a win over Maryland would be a huge way to grab let, the nation's let, attention. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. One of these years, Jim Moore is not going to have a starting quarterback well for the year in the first two weeks. All right. He's been there two years. He made a bowl. He made a bowl his first season after the taking of a horrible team, but he lost a starting quarterback in game one in the second quarter, right? Last year, I think it was game two, right? Yeah. He lost Fagnano. Now, this year, I mean, by the way, they kept it within 10 with NC State last year. No, they had a the, hard schedule last year. Well, by and... the time they, they, they almost beat Boston College, but by the <laughs> time they had lost Fagnano, they, they, you know, they were getting their ass whooped by everybody pretty much. They should have beat Utah State. They, they completely let them off the hook. Um, I think I'm, I'm telling you, I, I would not be surprised. The Etzel Bowl, you know, this is uh, Randy <laughs> Etzel. Remember, uh, this is a fun one. This is a fun uh, look. I know. Fun one. It is. <laughs> it is because you got, I think the Big Ten takes another L potentially. This series goes back to 1942, NC Nick. Um, I don't know. All I got to say, he's got Maryland rolling. While All we I were over say, there taking down uh, Normandy Beach, uh, <laughs> UConn and Maryland were playing football games. All right. I love it. Love it. All I got to say is that if you want me to watch this, you better move that shit to Thursday or Friday. <laughs> yeah. You got, Nick, Nick has a special hatred for Maryland for leaving the ACC. All right. <laughs> Put I hated Maryland list. when they were in the ACC. <laughs> oh, please let UConn win that. I'm telling you, the Big East. I'm sorry, the Big Ten could have a horrible, horrible fucking week. Uh, the only thing that's going to save them is Ohio State Akron. Um, but uh, I like it. I like this game. A little, little. Uh, you know, the Edsel Bowl, Northeast um, uh, Regional Matchup. NC Nick, you're on the clock. We only got what, seven picks left. Where you go? Right, let's see what Syracuse looks like in the Fran Brown era. And let's see how Kyle Honda McCord looks in Syracuse <laughs> orange against <laughs> my Ohio Bobcats and, and Mike Gundy's son. <laughs> <laughs> What's not I, to like about this game. I'm not convinced he's going to win the starting job, but we'll see. Uh, I don't, I don't think know. he will either at, at this point. Our options aren't great, but uh, look, I like it. Uh, Ohio's never beaten Syracuse. And this is also a series that goes back quite a ways. I want to say they played this game. Um, I thought they played a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah but I, close, I, right? I, I, Syracuse I, won. They, they, this game goes back to 1916. They first played. Whoa. All right. Whoa. So over a hundred years of history here going on at that filthy fucking carrier dome. Um, I think Ohio could be live. I don't know. Yeah, Honda McCord's got to have a big game. We'll see. Tim Alban keeps a good program. Him and so let's keep a good program there in Athens, Ohio. Patty, see your thoughts on Ohio at Syracuse. 10 and three versus six and seven. Ohio does keep a good program. They've been doing it for a few years now. Uh, Syracuse, uh, what do they do in the offseason? I mean, obviously they fired uh, Babers. Um, they got rid of uh, who is they, the, brought uh, in, they brought in a bunch of Georgia players. Yeah, they got Kyle McCord, Honda McCord from from uh, from uh, Ohio State. Ohio State. Patty, they, they, do, you, do you listen when we when we talk? No, no, no. I'm asking though, John. <laughs> who was it? John Beck uh, was the uh, offensive Beck. coordinator. Jason Beck. Jason Beck. Um, yeah, I think the offense for Syracuse could take <laughs> wait, a, wait, I don't know. <laughs> could take a major step back. I do think Iowa's a very live dog here, and it should be Iowa? a short line. Ohio. Or, Ohio. Ohio. <laughs> God, I'm getting drunk over here. <laughs> it was 2021 when they played this game. It was 12 to six at halftime. Syracuse. <laughs> pulled away, you know, made it, they went 129 to nine, but it was a closer game than it looked like a couple years ago. All right. I like this. I like this play. Um, NC Nick, I know you're repping your Mac hard. See, that, that's what he, he talks all this shit about me, being the big 12, he's always playing these Mac games. So always playing these Sunbelt games. All right. Um, 
All right, let's let's move along to the next one. Where the hell is my? You turn Nick is... into a hipster. Yeah. I can't talk to this son of a bitch. I can't talk to that son of a bitch. I really can't. I can't. <laughs> Look, I know you guys want me to play it. It's standalone. <laughs> Somebody, please. I got to do it. Boston College, Florida State, Monday, Labor Day. You've ruined my Labor Day college football. <laughs> All right. You've, you, who, who's in charge of the ACC? Who the fuck put Boston College? They're never must see TV. All right. It, it was a close game last year. BC almost pulled off the upset. <laughs> they should have. They should have, man. They were right there. Boston College at Florida State. Am I terrified that this could be a 42 point win by Florida State? Yes, 100%. In Tallahassee, the, definitely. The only thing is I'm counting on that old body clock coming back from Europe. <laughs> Look, me, me and NC Nick, where we went, we were over in Europe a couple <laughs> years back. You come back, you're you're uh, at least on the West Coast. I don't know. The East Coast is probably easier. West Coast, I was all fucked up. But Florida State, they play a game in Ireland, what, eight days before that. I'm counting on BC to cover just with that. I, I don't like the Bill O'Brien hire, but I know Patty C loves it. I, I, I think it was a horrible hire personally, but by, by Boston College. I think I they could have gone silly. I think a what, million what, different ways. What is Boston College gonna do? Are they ever gonna Chip recruit? Kelly? Well, Chip Kelly would be out there. Um he just left UCLA. He's not gonna go to Boston College from UCLA. Why? Because he's from the Northeast. He would. Um no. he was at New Hampshire for a long time. Anybody yeah, I could name a million. He climbed the mountain. <laughs> I could name a million fucking coach. Bob Chesney. That would have been a good hire, too. <laughs> That's I, what I'm saying. They brought in Grayson James from FIU at quarterback. They brought in Trayshawn Ward, the running back. Who, I do who like that Ward. state. Yeah. A little revenge angle going back to Tallahassee. I'm trying They're to gonna get their song. ass whooped. <laughs> Why is this our only game on Labor Day? Please move. One of these games, two of these games, actually, yeah, they should do a triple header. They're they're a dumb sport. I love college football, but they're so stupid. You want to maximize views? Do a triple header Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Because guess what? There's no NFL. But you're stupid. Yeah. You're stuck in this 1940s mentality. You fucking losers. Dude, it is um, a holiday. Give me Virginia, Maryland. I've been stumping for this for years. Give me Virginia versus Maryland in the Capital Classic, just like we have in high school basketball. But put that shit in DC. I think the, the fucking, I think the crab classic is more interesting is more interesting. Navy against Maryland. I would um, be down for that I'm too. I'm spend Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night watching football. So maybe maybe Labor Day, spend some time with the old wifey, watch a little. <laughs> oh, this Net, is the perfect Netflix game documentary. <laughs> this is the maybe, perfect maybe game should, for you. Maybe tonight. we should thank college football for helping. <laughs> You know, save our marriages <laughs> instead of watching this shit. Maybe that's what the producer of like uh, so, some network is like. You know what? I, on Mondays, I need I need time with my wife. What What's the boringest game we can put on there? Hey, I, we got to find a time slot for Boston College Florida State. I found it, sweetheart. Um, Prime time Monday yeah. night. <laughs> um. Anyway, that that's the best I could do for that. Patty, see you on the clock. <laughs> I mean, are we in the uh, Slim Pickens uh, section now or not? And we got to hurry up because I got All seven. Right. I got my heart out in 17 minutes. All right, let's fucking go. Uh, I'm going generic Virgi uh, Richmond at Virginia only because Richmond can pull the upset. We don't have to spend that is dangerous. Time. That is dangerous. Always dangerous. Even last time. I know Virginia pulled away late, but I feel like first half that thing was close. NC Nick, your thoughts on Richmond, Virginia. They're an hour apart. I love it. Let's go. Yes. Um, you're on the clock, NC Nick. Here's another game about an hour apart. Sam Houston at Rice. <laughs> battle, a, little, a, little, a little in Texas battle. Why not? I like this one. I do love this one. This is actually, you know what you're going to love about this? And, and I appreciate this play because this series dates back to 1912. It's an actual rivalry game. Rice has a 15 game lead, but they haven't played since 1993 because Rice wasn't playing FCSs for a little bit. Hell yeah, uh, bring it back. Glad this is back on the schedule. Battle of of Houston here, somewhat. I know Huntsville's right outside of Houston. Um, I do like this game. Patty C, Sam Houston State Rice, sign you up for it. Again, regionality, always beautiful. We're going to see if Sam Houston can overtake Rice. Rice has been remarkably good over the past couple of years considering their history, but Sam Houston on the way up. 
Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Um, all right. Well, let's continue on because uh, part of the Big Ten's debacle from old Pick Dundee. So you know, Nebraska got the number one recruit in the nation. I'm drawing a blank on his name right now. Dylan Riola. Yeah, Dylan Riola. They're gonna start him day one. UTEP went out and hired Austin Pease head coach Scotty Walden, who fucking dressed. He first off, he painted his face and his shirt orange at a uh, a UTEP basketball game to get fans excited. This guy is a winner. Austin P was a horrible program. Comes in four and two in the in the COVID season, then six and five, then seven and four, then nine and three, and guess what? He brings about thirty Austin P transfers. Watch out. You're starting a freshman quarterback against a UTEP team that is pretty much Austin P. Watch out. All I'm saying ne- Nebraska was not setting the world on fire a year ago. All right. Year so, two, though. Year two. But starting a quarterback that's never started a college football game could get a little tricky. A little risky. A little tricky. Tink. 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 <laughs> Give me the runners at Nebraska. Let's go. Let's go. NC Nick, your thoughts. Uh, talking about blowout potential. Uh, this is definitely it. I don't know if UTEP year one is ready to go on the road in a hostile environment. Uh, I mean, look, you got to pick a game here, so I'm not going to bash it too much. Well, but what it was, do you it mean, though? Nebraska list. couldn't blow out anybody last year. Yeah, that's, that's true. They've been they struggled with Georgia Southern a couple years ago at home. Uh, and who were they? Lost Northern Georgia Illinois? Southern. Yeah. That's what so, I'm saying. Uh, all right. All right. Sure. Did he ask Louisiana Tech, they only beat 28 to 14. That's true. All right. You sold me. Let's let's go UTEP. All right. Patty, see but your thoughts I on did, that one? I sold my property on, on the border there, so I'm kind of out on UTEP. <laughs> Patty, uh, see uh, your I feel thoughts like on Matt UTEP, Rule, Nebraska? Matt Rule, even with a brand new fresh out of high school quarterback, is going to roll UTEP. But boy, if you're right and UTEP challenges Nebraska, that would be a fun game to watch. There we go. All right. Uh, Patty, see it jumps to you. <laughs> That's well, my last, last pick. pick. Number last 28 pick. here. Yeah. Let's do it. You know, I am going to go with uh, uh, an in state rivalry, or not a rivalry, I should say, but Grambling at Louisiana. Uh, Mike Desmaro needs a win, needs all the wins he can get after uh, Billy Napier had a great run and he hasn't lived up to that. And Grambling, the in state HBCU, is licking their chops for the upset. Give me Grambling at Louisiana. <laughs> Love the regionality here. Shout out to Coke Booger, one of my favorite names. Uh, <laughs> dropping by to say I'm sick over missing Vegas. For March Madness, but appreciate you fuckers to no end. We'll listen to the show later tonight when I'm freed up. Let's go college football. Uh, you picked the wrong one though, Patty C. Like I, I like this game on the schedule, but Louisiana has been recruiting at a high level. If Desmar loses this, he's fired. I think it's the other one. Jackson State's uh, live against ULM. Okay. I think that's well, the I one you Jackson want. State to yeah. beat ULM. Yeah. I think that's a less yeah. compelling game. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, NC Nick, my last. <laughs> My last pick is uh, my two favorite conferences. And uh, we mentioned a couple of games that were about an hour apart. If that's too far, too long of a distance, how about the Battle of Atlanta? Georgia State <laughs> at Georgia they Tech. they never played? Let's I like go. this one. Yeah. <laughs> Georgia State, though, I, look, I, if Sean Elliott was still there, he quits like mid spring. <laughs> Just. <laughs> March, March 5th. He's like, you know what? I'm taking the tight end position in South Carolina. Right. So Georgia state had to hit refresh, but y- y- Georgia tech is coming back from Ireland. So you got that in, in, in Look, maybe last, last couple of years, Georgia tech's lost to a uh, max school. So why can't the Sun Belt knock off the ACC in Bobby Dodd stadium there, Georgia state against Georgia tech. That is fun. It's, it's still Brent key there, right? Yeah. Or, Okay, so this would be something that could put him on the hot seat right off the bat. Well, I guess he'd already have been throttled by Florida State. So you go zero and two, <laughs> bad start, bad could start. Be, bad could start be a really, three. really bad start, folks. Before we get to my final pick and then our Lou Holtz, what the fuck game of the week? Uh, I want to tell you that the college football experience is brought to you by AVO. We are proud to partner with AVO, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically, bet 
uh, betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in profit. Uh, yes, the AVO tool scans the sports books looking for discrepancies in the odds and then tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book and uh, to expect the profit essentially. And the tool is super easy to use. It's lightning fast as obviously, but you know, speed is such a huge part of betting, uh, you know, arbitrage sports betting essentially. So check it out. The best part too, is that AVO is currently free to use without any restrictions. That's right. Completely free. Get started today at arbs versus odds.com. That's arbs versus odds. A R B S versus odds.com. Check it out. All right. Shout out to Coke Booger giving us 50 American. No, oh, hey. self imposed oh. fine for, for Dang. Vegas for March Madness. Hoping there's a plan. Yeah, there we go. We'll be there second week in September, well, I believe. Good. Um, my final pick, Mr. Irrelevant here. <laughs> That's you. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a couple that I really like. We almost need to change this to 40 next year. Uh, <laughs> that's not, this is two hours and 10 minutes already. <laughs> Brett Favre's blood money is got is look, Will Hall complained about the NIL or complained about, uh, I'm sorry, recruiting in the transfer portal because he said, I'm out there trying to bring in NIL money. You know, Southern Miss and Kentucky have played twice in the Stoops era. Southern Miss, all of them have been in Lexington. Southern Miss won the first matchup. And the last match of Kentucky escaped by seven in the final minute of the game. I think the Sun Belt and the Golden Eagles and Brett Favre's blood money could give Kentucky. Kentucky doesn't have Devin Leary or Will Levis. They got Brock Vandergriff. Southern Miss got to come into Lexington and give them a game. Score one for Calipari. All right. Um, what a Patty flex! C- what a flex for the Sun Belt this would be if Southern Miss pulls this upset. That that it that deserves to be played. This game deserves to be played. I like it. it. Does. It's a good play. Yeah. Uh, NC Nick, your thoughts? Yeah, it does deserve to be played, even if it's thirtieth. But uh, let's go, Golden Eagles. Let's go. Shock the world. They, they they did it. I think in 2017. So let's go. Do it again. Do it again. Are we hitting um, any Lou Holtz games here? Yeah, Do we have time for yes. that? Yes, our Lou Holtz what the fuck game of the week. Oh, well, Why yeah, is this yeah. game on the schedule? <laughs> they, they ain't cold, but they're counting down. What is it doing five. on the schedule? We have selections, we have options, folks. Um NC or Patty C, you lead the, the charge here. Um I mean, I would think the ones that would come to mind if you want a little bit of a cheat sheet here, if you haven't had a chance to look at the Lou Holtz, Central Connecticut State's playing at Central Michigan. That one's kind of a what the fuck, but how about Robert Morris at Utah State? You're talking Pittsburgh and Logan, <laughs> Utah. Um, that uh, one stands out to me. Yeah, I, I think that for the most part, there's been a uh, decent regionality in a lot of these like what the fuck games. So that makes them respectable. Um, I'm gonna pull. It's a it's a it's a long game. Although North North uh, New Hampshire is a decent program, still they're not in UCF's class on a Thursday night. That's a long trip, and I expect UCF to dominate New Hampshire. It's not that good of a what the fuck game of the week, but it's the one I'm looking at. So I'll take it. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, that is that is one that just geographic doesn't make a lot of sense. So I, I like I like that play. Uh, NC Nick, where are you going well, with? Well, well, I don't get. <laughs> they bring the income. Your Lou Holtz, what the fuck game of the week? Yeah, if you're gonna play a shitty FCS team, it better be. It better make sense geographically. If not, you're gonna find yourself on this list. And you mentioned the game, the fake Blue Devils of Central Connecticut State. Uh, just because them and Central Michigan both have Central in their name, doesn't mean they're <laughs> they're close or it makes sense or they should ever play each other. So that's my pick. The fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. My, my third one, it's Robert Morris, Pittsburgh and Logan, Utah. What in the fuck is that? Robert Morris at Utah state. I want to say Utah state was supposed to play someone and got canceled. So I won't blame them all the way, but still you couldn't have put Dixie state. Couldn't have found Portland state, Southern Idaho Utah, state, something we were state Robert Morris at Utah state. There's 0% chance. I watch any of that game. So, uh, the fuck is that? Yeah. All right, folks, we'll be back. This is just getting started. This is just week zero and week one. We're just getting started. We're going all the way through the whole fucking season. All right. Give Patty C a follow on Twitter at Patty C831. NC Nick's on Twitter at NC underscore underscore N I C K. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. 
the college football experience is on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. And folks, I see 420 people watching right now for uh, light them up, light them up. Uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are grateful that you're checking us out. Shout out to Coke Booger again for giving us 50 bucks. We're just getting oh. started. College football season. We got another college football show scheduled tomorrow with me and the bet detective. All right. It's college football season. It's college baseball season. Get into it, folks. Check out the college baseball experience. Check out the college football experience and the college basketball experience. Still doing shows that a look ahead. Top 25 episode today. Moneyline Mac did. We got the John Calipari to Arkansas news. FCS college football experience transfer portal episodes out. I host the UFL gambling podcast as those episodes are flying off the shelves and uh, CFL gambling podcast as well. Sports gambling podcast, the bottom line Bob's podcast. And we just dropped another special, the frozen four, which is going on this Thursday. Check out that episode. We put out on all the college experience feeds. So uh, once again, youtube.com slash the college experience, check it all out folks until next time. This is the college football experience. You better start thinking about yours. And we are out of here. Run and shoot. We can really run and shoot.